Jasher chapter 68. And it was at that time the Spirit of God was upon Miriam, the daughter of Amram, the sister of Aaron. And she went forth and prophesied about the house, saying, Behold, a son will be born unto us from my father and mother this time, and he will save Israel from the hands of Egypt. And when Amram heard the words of his daughter, he went and took his wife back to the house after he had driven her away at the time when Pharaoh ordered every male child of the house of Jacob to be thrown into the water. So Amram took Jochebed his wife three years after he had driven her away, and he came to her and she conceived. And at the end of seven months from her conception, she brought forth a son, and the whole house was filled with a great light, as of the light of the sun and moon at the time of their shining. And when the woman saw the child, that it was good and pleasing to the sight, she hid it for three months in an inner room. In those days the Egyptians conspired to destroy all the Hebrews there. And the Egyptian women went to Goshen, where the children of Israel were, and they carried their young ones upon their shoulders, their babes who could not yet speak. And in those days, when the women of the children of Israel brought forth, each woman had hidden her son from before the Egyptians, that the Egyptians might not know of their bringing forth, and might not destroy them from the land. And the Egyptian women came to Goshen, and their children who could not speak were upon their shoulders. And when an Egyptian woman came to the house of a Hebrew woman, her babe began to cry. And when it cried, the child that was in the inner room answered it. So the Egyptian women went and told it at the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh sent his officers to take the children and slay them. Thus did the Egyptians to the Hebrew women all the days. And it was at that time, about three months from Jochebed's concealment of her son, that the thing was known in Pharaoh's house. And the woman hastened to take away her son before the officers came. And she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister Miriam stood afar off to know what would be done to him and what would become of her words. And God sent forth at that time a terrible heat in the land of Egypt, which burned up the flesh of man like the sun in his circuit, and it greatly oppressed the Egyptians. And all the Egyptians went down to bathe in the river on account of the consuming heat which burned up their flesh. And Bathia, the daughter of Pharaoh, went also to bathe in the river, owing to the consuming heat. And her maidens walked at the riverside, and all the women of Egypt as well. And Bathia lifted up her eyes to the river, and she saw the ark upon the water, and sent her maid to fetch it. And she opened it, and saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and she said, This is one of the Hebrew children. And all the women of Egypt walking on the riverside desired to give him suck, but he would not suck. For this thing was from the Lord in order to restore him to his mother's breast. And Miriam, his sister, was at that time amongst the Egyptian women at the riverside. And she saw this thing, and she said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go fetch a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the young woman went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to Jochebed, Take this child away and suckle it for me, and I will pay thee thy wages, two bits of silver daily. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And at the end of two years, when the child grew up, she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was unto her as a son. And she called his name Moses, for she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And Amram his father called his name Cheba, for he said, It was for him that he associated with his wife, whom he had turned away. And Jochebed his mother called his name Jekuthiel, because she said, I have hoped for him to the Almighty, and God restored him unto me. 
And Miriam his sister called him Jared, for she descended after him to the river to know what his end would be. And Aaron his brother called his name Abai Zanuck, saying, My father left my mother and returned to her on his account. And Kehath the father of Amram called his name Abigdor, because on his account did God repair the breach of the house of Jacob, that they could no longer throw their male children into the water. And their nurse called him Abi Soko, saying, In his tabernacle was he hidden for three months on account of the children of Ham. And all Israel called his name Shemaiah, son of Nethanel, for they said, In his days has God heard their cries and rescued them from their oppressors. And Moses was in Pharaoh's house, and was unto Bathia, Pharaoh's daughter, as a son. And Moses grew up amongst the king's children. Jasher chapter 69 And the king of Edom died in those days, in the eighteenth year of his reign, and was buried in his temple, which he had built for himself as his royal residence in the land of Edom. And the children of Esau sent to Pethor, which is upon the river, and they fetched from there a young man of beautiful eyes and comely aspect, whose name was Saul, and they made him king over them in the place of Samla. And Saul reigned over the children of Esau in the land of Edom for forty years. And when Pharaoh, king of Egypt, saw that the counsel which Balaam had advised respecting the children of Israel did not succeed, but that still they were fruitful, multiplied, and increased throughout the land of Egypt, then Pharaoh commanded in those days that a proclamation should be issued throughout Egypt to the children of Israel, saying, No man shall diminish anything of his daily labor, and the man who shall be found deficient in his labor which he performs daily, whether in mortar or in bricks, then his youngest son shall be put in their place. And the labor of Egypt strengthened upon the children of Israel in those days. And behold, if one brick was deficient in any man's daily labor, the Egyptians took his youngest boy by force from his mother and put him into the building in the place of the brick which his father had left wanting. And the men of Egypt did so to all the children of Israel day by day, all the days, for a long period. But the tribe of Levi did not at that time work with the Israelites their brethren from the beginning. For the children of Levi knew the cunning of the Egyptians which they exercised at first toward the Israelites. Jasher chapter 70 and in the third year from the birth of Moses, Pharaoh was sitting at a banquet, when Alparanith the queen was sitting at his right, and Bathia at his left. And the lad Moses was lying upon her bosom. And Balaam the son of Beor with his two sons, and all the princes of the kingdom, were sitting at the table in the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand upon the king's head, and took the crown from the king's head, and placed it on his own head. And when the king and princes saw the work which the boy had done, the king and princes were terrified, and one man to his neighbor expressed astonishment. And the king said unto the princes who were before him at table, What speak you, and what say you, O princes, in this matter? And what is to be the judgment against the boy on account of this act? And Balaam, the son of Beor, the magician, answered before the king and princes. And he said, Remember now, O my lord and king, the dream which thou didst dream many days since, and that which thy servant interpreted unto thee. Now therefore, this is a child from the Hebrew children, in whom is the Spirit of God, and let not my lord the king imagine that this youngster did this thing without knowledge. For he is a Hebrew boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him, although he is yet a child. And with wisdom has he done this, and chosen unto himself the kingdom of Egypt. For this is the manner of all the Hebrews to deceive kings and their nobles, to do all these things cunningly, in order to make the kings of the earth and their men tremble. Surely thou knowest that Abraham their father acted thus, who deceived the army of Nimrod king of Babel, 
and Abimelech the king of Gerar, and that he possessed himself of the land of the children of Heth and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and that he descended into Egypt and said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister, in order to mislead Egypt and her king. His son Isaac also did so when he went to Gerar and dwelt there, and his strength prevailed over the army of Abimelech king of the Philistines. He also thought of making the kingdom of the Philistines stumble in saying that Rebekah, his wife, was his sister. Jacob also dealt treacherously with his brother and took from his hand his birthright and his blessing. He went then to Padan Aram to the house of Laban, his mother's brother, and cunningly obtained from him his daughter, his cattle, and all belonging to him, and fled away and returned to the land of Canaan to his father. His sons sold their brother Joseph who went down to Egypt and became a slave, and was placed in the prison house for twelve years, until the former pharaoh dreamed dreams and withdrew him from the prison house and magnified him above all the princes in Egypt on account of his interpreting his dreams to him. And when God caused a famine throughout the land, he sent for and brought his father and all his brothers and the whole of his father's household, and supported them without price or reward, and bought the Egyptians for slaves. Now therefore, my lord king, behold, this child has risen up in their stead in Egypt to do according to their deeds and to trifle with every king, prince, and judge. If it please the king, let us now spill his blood upon the ground, lest he grow up and take away the government from thy hand and the hope of Egypt perish after he shall have reigned. And Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for all the judges of Egypt and the wise men thereof, and let us know if the judgment of death is due to this boy, as thou didst say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Egypt, and they came before the king. And an angel of the Lord came amongst them, and he was like one of the wise men of Egypt. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard what this Hebrew boy who is in the house has done. And thus Balaam judged in the matter. Now judge you also, and see what is due to the boy for the act he has committed. And the angel, who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh, answered and said as follows, before all the wise men of Egypt, and before the king and the princess, If it please the king, let the king send for men who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire, and place them before the child. And if the child shall stretch forth his hand and take the onyx stone, then shall we know that with wisdom has the youth done all that he has done, and we must slay him. But if he stretch forth his hand upon the coal, then shall we know that it was not with knowledge that he did this thing, and he shall live. And the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princes. So the king did according to the word of the angel of the Lord. And the king ordered the onyx stone and coal to be brought and placed before Moses. And they placed the boy before them, and the lad endeavored to stretch forth his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of the Lord took his hand and placed it upon the coal. And the coal became extinguished in his hand. And he lifted it up and put it into his mouth and burned part of his lips and part of his tongue. And he became heavy in mouth and tongue. And when the king and princes saw this, they knew that Moses had not acted with wisdom in taking off the crown from the king's head. So the king and princes refrained from slaying the child. So Moses remained in Pharaoh's house, growing up, and the Lord was with him. And whilst the boy was in the king's house, he was robed in purple, and he grew amongst the children of the king. And when Moses grew up in the king's house, Bathia, the daughter of Pharaoh, considered him as a son, and all the household of Pharaoh honored him, and all the men of Egypt were afraid of him. And he daily went forth and came into the land of Goshen, where his brethren, the children of Israel, were. And Moses saw them daily in shortness of breath and hard labor. And Moses asked them, saying, Wherefore is this labor meted out unto you day by day? And they told him all that had befallen them and all the injunctions which Pharaoh had put upon them before his birth. And they told him all the counsels which Balaam the son of Beor had counseled against them. 
and what he had also counseled against him in order to slay him when he'd taken the king's crown from off his head. And when Moses heard these things, his anger was kindled against Balaam, and he sought to kill him, and he was in ambush for him day by day. And Balaam was afraid of Moses, and he and his two sons rose up and went forth from Egypt, and they fled and delivered their souls and betook themselves to the land of Cush, to Kikianus, king of Cush. And Moses was in the king's house, going out and coming in. The Lord gave him favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants, and in the eyes of all the people of Egypt. And they loved Moses exceedingly. And the day arrived when Moses went to Goshen to see his brethren, that he saw the children of Israel in their burdens and hard labor. And Moses was grieved on their account. And Moses returned to Egypt and came to the house of Pharaoh and came before the king, and Moses bowed down before the king. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, I pray thee, my lord, I have come to seek a small request from thee. Turn not away my face empty. And Pharaoh said unto him, Speak. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Let there be given unto thy servants the children of Israel who are in Goshen one day to rest therein from their labor. And the king answered Moses and said, Behold, I have lifted up thy face in this thing to grant thy request. And Pharaoh sent a proclamation to be issued throughout Egypt and Goshen, saying, To you, all the children of Israel, thus says the king, For six days you shall do your work and labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest and shall not perform any work. Thus shall you do all the days, as the king and Moses the son of Bathia have commanded. And Moses rejoiced at this thing which the king had granted to him. And all the children of Israel did as Moses ordered them. For this thing was from the Lord to the children of Israel. For the Lord had begun to remember the children of Israel to save them for the sake of their fathers. And the Lord was with Moses, and his fame went throughout Egypt. And Moses became great in the eyes of all the Egyptians, and in the eyes of all the children of Israel, seeking good for his people Israel, and speaking words of peace regarding them to the king. Jasher chapter 71 And when Moses was eighteen years old, he desired to see his father and mother, and he went to them to Goshen. And when Moses had come near Goshen, he came to the place where the children of Israel were engaged in work, and he observed their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian smiting one of his Hebrew brethren. And when the man who was beaten saw Moses, he ran to him for help. For the man, Moses, was greatly respected in the house of Pharaoh, and he said to him, My lord, attend to me. This Egyptian came to my house in the night, bound me, and came to my wife in my presence, and now he seeks to take my life away. And when Moses heard this wicked thing, his anger was kindled against the Egyptian, and he turned this way and the other, and when he saw there was no man there, he smote the Egyptian and hid him in the sand and delivered the Hebrew from the hand of him that smote him. And the Hebrew went to his house, and Moses returned to his home, and went forth and came back to the king's house. And when the man had returned home, he thought of repudiating his wife, for it was not right in the house of Jacob for any man to come to his wife after she had been defiled. And the woman went and told her brothers, and the woman's brothers sought to slay him, and he fled to his house and escaped. And on the second day Moses went forth to his brethren and saw, and behold, two men were quarreling, and he said to the wicked one, Why dost thou smite thy neighbor? And he answered him and said, Who has set thee for a prince and judge over us? Dost thou think to slay me as thou didst slay the Egyptian? And Moses was afraid, and he said, Surely the thing is known. And Pharaoh heard of this affair, and he ordered Moses to be slain. So God sent his angel, and he appeared unto Pharaoh in the likeness of a captain of the guard. And the angel of the Lord took the sword from the hand of the captain of the guard and took his head off with it. For the likeness of the captain of the guard 
was turned into the likeness of Moses. And the angel of the Lord took hold of the right hand of Moses and brought him forth from Egypt and placed him from without the borders of Egypt a distance of forty days' journey. And Aaron, his brother, alone remained in the land of Egypt. And he prophesied to the children of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord God of your ancestors, Throw away each man the abominations of his eyes, and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. And the children of Israel rebelled, and would not hearken to Aaron at that time. And the Lord thought to destroy them, were it not that the Lord remembered the covenant which he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In those days the hand of Pharaoh continued to be severe against the children of Israel, and he crushed and oppressed them, until the time when God sent forth his word and took notice of them. Jasher chapter 72 And it was in those days that there was a great war between the children of Cush and the children of the east and Aram, and they rebelled against the king of Cush in whose hands they were. So Cachianus, king of Cush, went forth with all the children of Cush, a people numerous as the sand, and he went to fight against Aram and the children of the east to bring them under subjection. And when Cachianus went out, he left Balaam the magician with his two sons to guard the city, and the lowest sort of the people of the land. So Cachianus went forth to Aram and the children of the east, and he fought against them and smote them, and they all fell down wounded before Cachianus and his people. And he took many of them captives, and he brought them under subjection as at first, and he encamped upon their land to take tribute from them as usual. And Balaam, the son of Beor, when the king of Cush had left him to guard the city and the poor of the city, he rose up and advised with the people of the land to rebel against King Cicianus, not to let him enter the city when he should come home. And the people of the land hearkened to him, and they swore to him and made him king over them, and his two sons for captains of the army. So they rose up and raised the walls of the city at the two corners and they built an exceeding strong building. And at the third corner they dug ditches without number between the city and the river which surrounded the whole land of Cush, and they made the waters of the river burst forth there. And at the fourth corner they collected numerous serpents by their incantations and enchantments, and they fortified the city and dwelt therein, and no one went out or in before them. And Cicianus fought against Aram and the children of the east, and he subdued them as before. And they gave him their usual tribute, and he went and returned to his land. And when Cicianus the king of Cush approached his city, and all the captains of the forces with him, they lifted up their eyes and saw that the walls of the city were built up and greatly elevated. So the men were astonished at this. And they said one to the other, it is because they saw that we delayed in battle and were greatly afraid of us. Therefore have they done this thing and raised the city walls and fortified them so that the kings of Canaan might not come in battle against them. So the king and the troops approached the city door, and they looked up and behold, all the gates of the city were closed. And they called out to the sentinels, saying, Open unto us, that we may enter the city. But the sentinels refused to open to them by the order of Balaam, the magician, their king. They suffered them not to enter their city. So they raised a battle with them opposite the city gate, and one hundred and thirty men of the army of Cicianus fell on that day. And on the next day they continued to fight, and they fought at the side of the river. They endeavored to pass, but were not able. So some of them sank in the pits and died. So the king ordered them to cut down trees to make rafts upon which they might pass to them, and they did so. And when they came to the place of the ditches, the waters revolved by mills, and two hundred men upon ten rafts were drowned. And on the third day they came to fight at the side where the serpents were, but they could not approach there, 
for the serpent slew of them one hundred and seventy men. And they ceased fighting against Cush. And they besieged Cush for nine years. No person came out or in. At that time that the war and the siege were against Cush, Moses fled from Egypt from Pharaoh who sought to kill him for having slain the Egyptian. And Moses was eighteen years old when he fled from Egypt from the presence of Pharaoh. And he fled and escaped to the camp of Cachianus, which at that time was besieging Cush. And Moses was nine years in the camp of Cachianus, king of Cush, all the time that they were besieging Cush. And Moses went out and came in with them. And the kings and princes and all the fighting men loved Moses, for he was great and worthy. His stature was like a noble lion, his face was like the sun, and his strength was like that of a lion. And he was counselor to the king. And at the end of nine years, Cachianus was seized with a mortal disease, and his illness prevailed over him. And he died on the seventh day. So his servants embalmed him and carried him and buried him opposite the city gate to the north of the land of Egypt. And they built over him an elegant, strong, and high building, and they placed great stones below. And the king's scribes engraved upon those stones all the might of their king Cicinus and all his battles which he had fought. Behold, they are written there at this day. Now after the death of Cicinus, king of Cush, it grieved his men and troops greatly on account of the war. So they said one to the other, Give us counsel what we're to do at this time, as we have resided in the wilderness nine years away from our homes. If we say we will fight against the city, many of us will fall wounded or killed. And if we remain here in the siege, we shall also die. For now all the kings of Aram and of the children of the east will hear that our king is dead, and they will attack us suddenly in a hostile manner, and they will fight against us and leave no remnant of us. Now therefore let us go and make a king over us, and let us remain in the siege until the city is delivered up to us. And they wished to choose on that day a man for king from the army of Cicinus. And they found no object of their choice like Moses to reign over them. And they hastened and stripped off each man his garments and cast them upon the ground, and they made a great heap and placed Moses thereon. And they rose up and blew with trumpets and called out before him and said, May the king live, may the king live. And all the people and nobles swore unto him to give him for a wife Adoniah the queen, the Cushite, wife of Cicinus. And they made Moses king over them on that day. And all the people of Cush issued a proclamation on that day, saying, Every man must give something to Moses of what is in his possession. And they spread out a sheet upon the heap, and every man cast into it something of what he had, one a gold earring and the other a coin. Also of onyx stones, bedellium, pearls, and marble, did the children of Cush cast unto Moses upon the heap, also silver and gold in great abundance. And Moses took all the silver and gold, all the vessels and the bedellium and onyx stones which all the children of Cush had given to him, and he placed them amongst his treasures. And Moses reigned over the children of Cush on that day, in the place of Cicinus, king of Cush. Jasher chapter 73 In the fifty-fifth year of the reign of Pharaoh king of Egypt, that is in the hundred and fifty-seventh year of the Israelites going down into Egypt, reigned Moses in Cush. Moses was twenty-seven years old when he began to reign over Cush, and forty years did he reign. And the Lord granted Moses favor and grace in the eyes of all the children of Cush. And the children of Cush loved him exceedingly. So Moses was favored by the Lord and by men. And in the seventh day of his reign, all the children of Cush assembled and came before Moses and bowed down to him to the ground. And all the children spoke together in the presence of the king, saying, Give us counsel that we may see what is to be done to this city. 
for it is now nine years that we have been besieging round about the city, and have not seen our children and our wives. So the king answered them, saying, If you will hearken to my voice in all that I shall command you, then will the Lord give the city into our hands, and we shall subdue it. For if we fight with them as in the former battle which we had with them before the death of Cacianus, many of us will fall down wounded as before. Now therefore, behold, here is counsel for you in this matter. If you will hearken to my voice, then will the city be delivered into our hands. So all the forces answered the king, saying, All that our Lord shall command, that will we do. And Moses said unto them, Pass through, and proclaim a voice in the whole camp unto all the people, saying, Thus says the king, Go into the forest, and bring with you of the young ones of the stork, each man a young one in his hand. And any person transgressing the word of the king, who shall not bring his young one, he shall die, and the king will take all belonging to him. And when you shall bring them up, they shall be in your keeping. You shall rear them until they grow up, and you shall teach them to dart upon, as is the way of the young ones of the hawk. So all the children of Cush heard the words of Moses. And they rose up and caused a proclamation to be issued throughout the camp, saying, Unto you all the children of Cush, the king's order is that you go all together to the forest and catch there the young storks, each man his young one in his hand, and you shall bring them home. And any person violating the order of the king shall die, and the king will take all that belongs to him. And all the people did so. And they went out to the wood, and they climbed the fir trees, and caught each man a young one in his hand, all the young of the storks. And they brought them into the desert, and reared them by order of the king. And they taught them to dart upon, similar to the young hawks. And after the young storks were reared, the king ordered them to be hungered for three days. And all the people did so. And on the third day the king said unto them, Strengthen yourselves, and become valiant men, and put on each man his armor, and gird on his sword upon him, and ride each man his horse, and take each his young stork in his hand. And we will rise up and fight against the city at the place where the serpents are. And all the people did as the king had ordered. And they took each man his young one in his hand, and they went away. And when they came to the place of the serpents, the king said to them, Send forth each man his young stork upon the serpents. And they sent forth each man his young stork at the king's order. And the young storks ran upon the serpents, and they devoured them all, and destroyed them out of that place. And when the king and the people had seen that all the serpents were destroyed in that place, all the people set up a great shout. And they approached and fought against the city, and took it and subdued it and they entered the city. And there died on that day one thousand and one hundred men of the people of the city, all that inhabited the city, but of the people besieging not one died. So the children of Cush went each to his home, to his wife and children, and to all belonging to him. And Balaam the magician, when he saw that the city was taken, he opened the gate, he and his two sons and eight brothers fled and returned to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They are the sorcerers and magicians who are mentioned in the book of the law, standing against Moses when the Lord brought the plagues upon Egypt. So Moses took the city by his wisdom, and the children of Cush placed him on the throne instead of Kikianus, king of Cush. And they placed the royal crown upon his head, and they gave him for a wife Adoniah the Cushite queen, wife of Cacianus. And Moses feared the Lord God of his fathers, so that he came not to her, nor did he turn his eyes to her. For Moses remembered how Abraham had made his servant Eliezer swear, saying unto him, Thou shalt not take a woman from the daughters of Canaan for my son Isaac. Also what Isaac did when Jacob had fled from his brother, when he commanded him, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan, nor make alliance with any of the children of Ham. For the Lord our God gave Ham, the son of Noah, and his children and all his seed as slaves to the children of Shem 
and to the children of Japheth, and unto their seed after them for slaves for ever. Therefore Moses turned not his heart nor his eyes to the wife of Kikianus all the days that he reigned over Cush. And Moses feared the Lord his God all his life. And Moses walked before the Lord in truth with all his heart and soul. He turned not from the right way all the days of his life. He declined not from the way either to the right or to the left in which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had walked. And Moses strengthened himself in the kingdom of the children of Cush, and he guided the children of Cush with his usual wisdom, and Moses prospered in his kingdom. And at that time Aram and the children of the east heard that Kikianus, king of Cush, had died. So Aram and the children of the east rebelled against Cush in those days. And Moses gathered all the children of Cush, a people very mighty, about thirty thousand men, and he went forth to fight with Aram and the children of the east. And they went at first to the children of the east. And when the children of the east heard their report, they went to meet them and engaged in battle with them. And the war was severe against the children of the east. So the Lord gave all the children of the east into the hand of Moses. About three hundred men fell down slain. And all the children of the east turned back and retreated. So Moses and the children of Cush followed them and subdued them and put a tax upon them, as was their custom. So Moses and all the people with him passed from there to the land of Aram for battle. And the people of Aram also went to meet them, and they fought against them. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Moses, and many of the men of Aram fell down wounded. And Aram also was subdued by Moses and the people of Cush, and also gave their usual tax. And Moses brought Aram and the children of the east under subjection to the children of Cush. And Moses and all the people who were with him returned to the land of Cush. And Moses strengthened himself in the kingdom of the children of Cush, and the Lord was with him. And all the children of Cush were afraid of him. Jasher chapter 74 In the end of years died Saul king of Edom, and Baal Canaan the son of Akbor reigned in his place. In the sixteenth year of the reign of Moses over Cush, Baal Canaan the son of Akbor reigned in the land of Edom over all the children of Edom for thirty-eight years. In his days Moab rebelled against the power of Edom having been under Edom since the days of Hadad, the son of Bedad, who smote them and Midian, and brought Moab under subjection to Edom. And when Baal Canaan, the son of Akbor, reigned over Edom, all the children of Moab withdrew their allegiance from Edom. And Angeas, king of Africa, died in those days, and Asdrubal his son reigned in his stead. And in those days, died Janius, king of the children of Chittim, and they buried him in his temple, which he had built for himself in the plain of Canopia for a residence. And Latinus reigned in his stead. In the twenty-second year of the reign of Moses over the children of Cush, Latinus reigned over the children of Chittim forty-five years. And he also built for himself a great and mighty tower, And he built therein an elegant temple for his residence, to conduct his government, as was the custom. In the third year of his reign, he caused a proclamation to be made to all his skillful men, who made many ships for him. And Latinus assembled all his forces, and they came in ships, and went therein to fight with Asdrubal, son of Angius, king of Africa. And they came to Africa and engaged in battle with Asdrubal and his army. And Latinus prevailed over Asdrubal. And Latinus took from Asdrubal the aqueduct which his father had brought from the children of Chittim, when he took Jania, the daughter of Uzai, for a wife. So Latinus overthrew the bridge of the aqueduct and smote the whole army of Asdrubal a severe blow. And the remaining strong men of Asdrubal strengthened themselves, and their hearts were filled with envy, and they courted death, and again engaged in battle with Latinus, king of Chittim. 
and the battle was severe upon all the men of Africa, and they all fell wounded before Latinus and his people. And Asdrubal the king also fell in that battle. And the king Asdrubal had a very beautiful daughter, whose name was Ashpezana, and all the men of Africa embroidered her likeness on their garments on account of her great beauty and comely appearance. And the men of Latinus saw Ashpezana, the daughter of Asdrubal, and praised her unto Latinus their king. And Latinus ordered her to be brought to him. And Latinus took Ashpezana for a wife, and he turned back on his way to Chittim. And it was after the death of Asdrubal, son of Angius, when Latinus had returned back to his land from the battle, that all the inhabitants of Africa rose up and took Annibal, the son of Angius, the younger brother of Asdrubal, and made him king instead of his brother over the whole land of Africa. And when he reigned, he resolved to go to Chittim to fight with the children of Chittim, to avenge the cause of Asdrubal his brother, and the cause of the inhabitants of Africa. And he did so. And he made many ships. And he came therein with his whole army, and he went to Chittim. So Annibal fought with the children of Chittim, and the children of Chittim fell wounded before Annibal and his army. And Annibal avenged his brother's cause. And Annibal continued the war for eighteen years with the children of Chittim. And Annibal dwelt in the land of Chittim and encamped there for a long time. And Annibal smote the children of Chittim very severely, and he slew their great men and princes, and of the rest of the people he smote about eighty thousand men. And at the end of days and years, Annibal returned to his land of Africa, and he reigned securely in the place of Asdrubal, his brother. Jasher chapter 75 At that time, in the hundred and eightieth year of the Israelites going down into Egypt, there went forth from Egypt valiant men, thirty thousand on foot, from the children of Israel, who were all of the tribe of Joseph, of the children of Ephraim, the son of Joseph. For they said, The period was completed which the Lord had appointed to the children of Israel in the times of old, which he had spoken to Abraham. And these men girded themselves, and they put each man his sword at his side, and every man his armor upon him, and they trusted to their strength, and they went out together from Egypt with a mighty hand. But they brought no provision for the road, only silver and gold, not even bread for that day did they bring in their hands, for they thought of getting their provision for pay from the Philistines, and if not, they would take it by force. And these men were very mighty and valiant men. One man could pursue a thousand, and two could rout ten thousand. So they trusted to their strength, and went together as they were. And they directed their course toward the land of Gath, and they went down and found the shepherds of Gath feeding the cattle of the children of Gath. And they said to the shepherds, Give us some of the sheep for pay, that we may eat, for we are hungry, for we have eaten no bread this day. And the shepherds said, Are they our sheep or cattle, that we should give them to you even for pay? So the children of Ephraim approached to take them by force. And the shepherds of Gath shouted over them that their cry was heard at a distance, so all the children of Gath went out to them. And when the children of Gath saw the evil doings of the children of Ephraim, they returned and assembled the men of Gath, and they put on each man his armor, and came forth to the children of Ephraim for battle. And they engaged with them in the valley of Gath, and the battle was severe, and they smote from each other a great many on that day. And on the second day the children of Gath sent to all the cities of the Philistines that they should come to their help, saying, Come up unto us and help us, that we may smite the children of Ephraim, who have come forth from Egypt to take our cattle, and to fight against us without cause. Now the souls of the children of Ephraim were exhausted with hunger and thirst, for they had eaten no bread for three days. And forty thousand men went forth from the cities of the Philistines to the assistance of the men of Gath. And these men were engaged in battle with the children of Ephraim. And the Lord delivered the children of Ephraim into the hands of the Philistines. And they smote all the children of Ephraim 
all who'd gone forth from Egypt, none were remaining but ten men who'd run away from the engagement. For this evil was from the Lord against the children of Ephraim, for they transgressed the word of the Lord in going forth from Egypt before the period had arrived which the Lord in the days of old had appointed to Israel. And of the Philistines also there fell a great many, about twenty thousand men, and their brethren carried them and buried them in their cities. And the slain of the children of Ephraim remained forsaken in the valley of Gath for many days and years, and were not brought to burial. And the valley was filled with men's bones. And the men who had escaped from the battle came to Egypt and told all the children of Israel all that had befallen them. And their father Ephraim mourned over them for many days, and his brethren came to console him. And he came unto his wife, and she bare a son, and he called his name Beriah, for she was unfortunate in his house. Jasher chapter 76 And Moses the son of Amram was still king in the land of Cush in those days. And he prospered in his kingdom. And he conducted the government of the children of Cush in justice, in righteousness, and integrity. And all the children of Cush loved Moses all the days that he reigned over them. And all the inhabitants of the land of Cush were greatly afraid of him. And in the fortieth year of the reign of Moses over Cush, Moses was sitting on the royal throne whilst Adoniah the queen was before him. And all the nobles were sitting around him. And Adoniah the queen said before the king and the princes, What is this thing which you the children of Cush have done for this long time? Surely you know that for forty years that this man has reigned over Cush, he has not approached me, nor has he served the gods of the children of Cush. Now therefore hear, O ye children of Cush, and let this man no more reign over you, as he is not of our flesh. Behold, Menachus, my son, is grown up, let him reign over you. For it is better for you to serve the son of your Lord than to serve a stranger, slave of the king of Egypt. And all the people and nobles of the children of Cush heard the words which Adoniah the queen had spoken in their ears. And all the people were preparing until evening. And in the morning they rose up early and made Menachus, son of Cachianus, king over them. And all the children of Cush were afraid to stretch forth their hand against Moses, for the Lord was with Moses. And the children of Cush remembered the oath which they swore unto Moses, therefore they did no harm to him. And the children of Cush gave many presents to Moses, and sent him from them with great honor. So Moses went forth from the land of Cush, and went home, and ceased to reign over Cush. And Moses was sixty-six years old when he went out of the land of Cush, for the thing was from the Lord, for the period had arrived which he had appointed in the days of old to bring forth Israel from the affliction of the children of Ham. So Moses went to Midian, for he was afraid to return to Egypt on account of Pharaoh, and he went and sat at a well of water in Midian. And the seven daughters of Ruel the Midianite went out to feed their father's flock. And they came to the well and drew water to water their father's flock. So the shepherds of Midian came and drove them away, and Moses rose up and helped them and watered the flock. And they came home to their father Ruel and told him what Moses did for them. And they said, An Egyptian man has delivered us from the hands of the shepherds. He drew up water for us and watered the flock. And Ruel said to his daughters, And where is he? Wherefore have you left the man? And Ruel sent for him and fetched him and brought him home, and he ate bread with him. And Moses related to Ruel that he had fled from Egypt, and that he reigned forty years over Cush, and that they afterward had taken the government from him, and had sent him away in peace, with honor, and with presence. And when Ruel had heard the words of Moses, Ruel said within himself, I will put this man into the prison house, whereby I shall conciliate the children of Cush, for he has fled from them. And they took and put him into the prison house. And Moses was in prison ten years. And whilst Moses was in the prison house, 
Zipporah, the daughter of Ruel, took pity over him and supported him with bread and water all the time. And all the children of Israel were yet in the land of Egypt, serving the Egyptians in all manner of hard work. And the hand of Egypt continued in severity over the children of Israel in those days. At that time, the Lord smote Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he afflicted with the plague of leprosy from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Owing to the cruel treatment of the children of Israel was this plague at that time from the Lord upon Pharaoh king of Egypt. For the Lord had hearkened to the prayer of his people, the children of Israel, and their cry reached him on account of their hard work. Still his anger did not turn from them, and the hand of Pharaoh was still stretched out against the children of Israel, and Pharaoh hardened his neck before the Lord and he increased his yoke over the children of Israel and embittered their lives with all manner of hard work. And when the Lord had inflicted the plague upon Pharaoh king of Egypt, he asked his wise men and sorcerers to cure him. And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him, that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. And Pharaoh hearkened to them, and sent his ministers to Goshen to the children of Israel to take their little children. And Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants of the children of Israel from the bosoms of their mothers by force, and they brought them to Pharaoh daily, a child each day. And the physicians killed them and applied them to the plague. Thus did they all the days. And the number of the children which Pharaoh slew was three hundred and seventy-five. But the Lord hearkened not to the physicians of the king of Egypt, and the plague went on increasing mightily. And Pharaoh was ten years afflicted with that plague. Still the heart of Pharaoh was more hardened against the children of Israel. Now at the end of ten years, the Lord continued to afflict Pharaoh with destructive plagues. And the Lord smote him with a bad tumor and sickness at the stomach, and that plague turned to a severe boil. At that time, the two ministers of Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen, where all the children of Israel were, and went to the house of Pharaoh and said to him, We have seen the children of Israel slacken in their work and negligent in their labor. And when Pharaoh heard the words of his ministers, his anger was kindled against the children of Israel exceedingly, for he was greatly grieved at his bodily pain. And he answered and said, Now that the children of Israel know that I am ill, they turn and scoff at us. Now therefore harness my chariot for me, and I will betake myself to Goshen, and will see the scoff of the children of Israel with which they are deriding me. So his servants harnessed the chariot for him, and they took and made him ride upon a horse, for he was not able to ride of himself. And he took with him ten horsemen and ten footmen, and went to the children of Israel, to Goshen. And when they had come to the border of Egypt, the king's horse passed into a narrow place, elevated in the hollow part of the vineyard, fenced on both sides, the low plain country being on the other side. And the horses ran rapidly in that place, and pressed each other, and the other horses pressed the king's horse. And the king's horse fell into the low plain whilst the king was riding upon it. And when he fell, the chariot turned over the king's face, and the horse lay upon the king. And the king cried out, for his flesh was very sore. And the flesh of the king was torn from him, and his bones were broken, and he could not ride. For this thing was from the Lord to him, for the Lord had heard the cries of his people, the children of Israel, and their affliction. And his servants carried him upon their shoulders a little at a time, and they brought him back to Egypt. And the horsemen who were with him came also back to Egypt. And they placed him in his bed, and the king knew that his end was come to die. So Apparanath the queen his wife came and cried before the king, and the king wept a great weeping with her. And all his nobles and servants came on that day and saw the king in that affliction and wept a great weeping with him. And the princes of the king and all his counselors advised the king to cause one to reign in his stead in the land, whomsoever he would choose from his sons. 
And the king had three sons and two daughters, which apparenteth the queen his wife had borne to him, beside the king's children of concubines. And these were their names. The firstborn Othri, the second Adicum, and the third Morion, and their sisters. The name of the elder, Bathia, and of the other, Akuzai. And Othri, the firstborn of the king, was an idiot, precipitate and hurried in his words. But Adikam was a cunning and wise man, knowing in all the wisdom of Egypt, but of unseemly aspect, thick in flesh and very short in stature. His height was one cubit. And when the king saw Adikam, his son, intelligent and wise in all things, the king resolved that he should be king in his stead after his death. And he took for him a wife, Gerudah, daughter of Abelard, and he was ten years old and she bare unto him four sons. And he afterward went and took three wives, and begat eight sons and three daughters. And the disorder greatly prevailed over the king, and his flesh stank like the flesh of a carcass cast upon the field in summertime during the heat of the sun. And when the king saw that his sickness had greatly strengthened itself over him, he ordered his son Adikam to be brought to him and they made him king over the land in his place. And at the end of three years the king died in shame, disgrace, and disgust. And his servants carried him and buried him in the sepulchre of the kings of Egypt in Zoan, Mizraim. But they embalmed him not, as was usual with kings, for his flesh was putrid, and they could not approach to embalm him on account of the stench. So they buried him in haste. For this evil was from the Lord to him. For the Lord had requited him evil for the evil which in his days he had done to Israel. And he died with terror and with shame. And his son Adikam reigned in his place. Jasher chapter 77 Adikam was twenty years old when he reigned over Egypt. He reigned four years. In the 206th year of Israel's going down to Egypt did Adikam reign over Egypt. But he continued not so long in his reign over Egypt as his fathers had continued in their reigns. For Melol, his father, reigned ninety-four years in Egypt. But he was ten years sick and died, for he had been wicked before the Lord. And all the Egyptians called the name of Adikam Pharaoh, like the name of his fathers, as was their custom to do in Egypt. And all the wise men of Pharaoh called the name of Adikam Ahuz, for short is called Ahuz in the Egyptian language. And Adikam was exceedingly ugly, and he was a cubit and a span, and he had a great beard which reached to the soles of his feet. And Pharaoh sat upon his father's throne to reign over Egypt, and he conducted the government of Egypt in his wisdom. And whilst he reigned, he exceeded his father and all the preceding kings in wickedness, and he increased his yoke over the children of Israel. And he went with his servants to Goshen to the children of Israel, and he strengthened the labor over them, and he said unto them, Complete your work, each day's task, and let not your hands slacken from our work from this day forward, as you did in the days of my father. And he placed officers over them from amongst the children of Israel. And over these officers he placed taskmasters from amongst his servants. And he placed over them a measure of bricks for them to do according to that number day by day. And he turned back and went to Egypt. At that time the taskmasters of Pharaoh ordered the officers of the children of Israel according to the command of Pharaoh, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, Do your work each day and finish your task, and observe the daily measure of bricks. Diminish not anything. And it shall come to pass that if you are deficient in your daily bricks, I will put your young children in their stead. And the taskmasters of Egypt did so in those days as Pharaoh had ordered them. And whenever any deficiency was found in the children of Israel's measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh would go to the wives of the children of Israel and take infants of the children of Israel to the number of bricks deficient. They would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the building instead of the bricks, whilst their fathers and mothers were crying over them and weeping when they heard the weeping voices of their infants in the wall of the building. 
and the taskmasters prevailed over Israel, that the Israelites should place their children in the building, so that a man placed his son in the wall and put mortar over him, whilst his eyes wept over him, and his tears ran down upon his child. And the taskmasters of Egypt did so to the babes of Israel for many days, and no one pitied or had compassion over the babes of the children of Israel. And the number of all the children killed in the building was 270, some whom they had built upon instead of the bricks, which had been left deficient by their fathers, and some whom they had drawn out dead from the building. And the labor imposed upon the children of Israel in the days of Adikam exceeded in hardship that which they performed in the days of his father. And the children of Israel sighed every day on account of their heavy work, for they had said to themselves, Behold, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will rise up and lighten our work. But they increased the latter work more than the former. And the children of Israel sighed at this, and their cry ascended to God on account of their labor. And God heard the voice of the children of Israel and their cry in those days. And God remembered to them his covenant, which he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God saw the burden of the children of Israel and their heavy work in those days, and he determined to deliver them. And Moses, the son of Amram, was still confined in the dungeon in those days, in the house of Rule the Midianite. And Zipporah, the daughter of Rule, did support him with food secretly day by day. And Moses was confined in the dungeon in the house of Rule for ten years. And at the end of ten years, which was the first year of the reign of Pharaoh over Egypt in the place of his father, Zipporah said to her father Rule, No person inquires or seeks after the Hebrew man whom thou didst bind in prison now ten years. Now therefore, if it seem good in thy sight, let us send and see whether he is living or dead. But her father knew not that she had supported him. And Rule her father answered and said to her, Has ever such a thing happened that a man should be shut up in a prison without food for ten years, and that he should live? And Zipporah answered her father, saying, Surely thou hast heard that the God of Hebrews is great and awful, and does wonders for them at all times. He it was who delivered Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans, and Isaac from the sword of his father, and Jacob from the angel of the Lord who wrestled with them at the ford of Jabbok. Also with this man has he done many things. He delivered him from the river in Egypt, and from the sword of Pharaoh, and from the children of Cush. So also can he deliver him from famine, and make him live. And the thing seemed good in the sight of rule, and he did according to the word of his daughter, and sent to the dungeon to ascertain what became of Moses. And he saw, and behold, the man Moses was living in the dungeon, standing upon his feet, praising and praying to the God of his ancestors. And Rule commanded Moses be brought out of the dungeon. So they shaved him, and he changed his prison garments and ate bread. And afterward Moses went into the garden of Rule, which was behind the house, and he there prayed to the Lord his God, who had done mighty wonders for him. And it was that whilst he prayed he looked opposite to him, and behold a sapphire stick was placed in the ground, which was planted in the midst of the garden. And he approached the stick, and he looked. And behold, the name of the Lord God of hosts was engraved thereon, written and developed upon the stick. And he read it, and stretched forth his hand, and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket, and the stick was in his hand. And this was the stick with which all the works of our God were performed, after he had created heaven and earth and all the host of them, seas, rivers, and all their fishes. And when God had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and went and tilled the ground from which he was taken. And the stick came down to Noah and was given to Shem and his descendants until it came into the hand of Abraham the Hebrew. And when Abraham had given all he had to his son Isaac, he also gave to him this stick. And when Jacob had fled to Padan Aram, he took it into his hand and when he returned to his father, he had not left it behind him. Also, when he went down to Egypt, he took it into his hand and gave it to Joseph, one portion above his brethren. 
for Jacob had taken it by force from his brother Esau. And after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Egypt came into the house of Joseph, and the stick came into the hand of Rule the Midianite. And when he went out of Egypt, he took it in his hand and planted it in his garden. And all the mighty men of the Kainites tried to pluck it when they endeavored to get Zipporah his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. So that stick remained planted in the garden of Rule until he came who had a right to it and took it. And when Rule saw the stick in the hand of Moses, he wondered at it. And he gave him his daughter Zipporah for a wife. Jasher chapter 78 At that time died Baal Canaan, son of Achbor, king of Edom, and was buried in his house in the land of Edom. And after his death, the children of Esau sent to the land of Edom and took from there a man who was in Edom, whose name was Hadad. And they made him king over them in the place of Baal Canaan, their king. And Hadad reigned over the children of Edom forty-eight years. And when he reigned, he resolved to fight against the children of Moab to bring them under the power of the children of Esau as they were before. But he was not able, because the children of Moab heard this thing, and they rose up and hastened to elect a king over them from amongst their brethren. And they afterward gathered together a great people and sent to the children of Ammon their brethren for help to fight against Hadad, king of Edom. And Hadad heard the thing which the children of Moab had done and was greatly afraid of them, and refrained from fighting against them. In those days Moses the son of Amram in Midian took Zipporah the daughter of Ruel the Midianite for a wife. And Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah, Rebekah, Rachel, and Leah. And Zipporah conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I was a stranger in a foreign land. But he circumcised not his foreskin at the command of Rule, his father-in-law. And she conceived again and bare a son, but circumcised his foreskin and called his name Eliezer. For Moses said, Because the God of my fathers was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, greatly increased the labor of the children of Israel in those days and continued to make his yoke heavier upon the children of Israel. And he ordered a proclamation to be made in Egypt, saying, Give no more straw to the people to make bricks with. Let them go and gather themselves straw as they can find it. Also the tale of bricks which they shall make, let them give each day, and diminish nothing from them, for they are idle in their work. And the children of Israel heard this, and they mourned and sighed, and they cried unto the Lord on account of the bitterness of their souls. And the Lord heard the cries of the children of Israel, and saw the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. And the Lord was jealous of his people and his inheritance, and he heard their voice. And he resolved to take them out of the affliction of Egypt, to give them the land of Canaan for a possession. Jasher chapter 79 And in those days Moses was feeding the flock of Ruel the Midianite, his father-in-law, beyond the wilderness of Sin. And the stick which he took from his father-in-law was in his hand. And it came to pass one day that a kid of goats strayed from the flock, and Moses pursued it, and it came to the mountain of God, to Horeb. And when he came to Horeb, the Lord appeared there unto him in the bush, and he found the bush burning with fire, but the fire had no power over the bush to consume it. And Moses was greatly astonished at this sight, wherefore the bush was not consumed. And he approached to see this mighty thing. And the Lord called unto Moses out of the fire, and commanded him to go down to Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt to send the children of Israel from his service. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, return to Egypt, for all those men who sought thy life are dead. And thou shalt speak unto Pharaoh to send forth the children of Israel from his land. 
And the Lord showed him to do signs and wonders in Egypt before the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his subjects, in order that they might believe that the Lord had sent him. And Moses hearkened to all that the Lord had commanded him. And he returned to his father-in-law and told him the thing. And Rule said to him, Go in peace. And Moses rose up to go to Egypt, and he took his wife and sons with him. And he was at an inn in the road, and an angel of God came down and sought an occasion against him. And he wished to kill him on account of his firstborn son, because he had not circumcised him, and had transgressed the covenant which the Lord had made with Abraham. For Moses had hearkened to the words of his father-in-law, which she had spoken to him, not to circumcise his firstborn son. Therefore he circumcised him not. And Zipporah saw the angel of the Lord seeking an occasion against Moses, and she knew that this thing was owing to his not having circumcised her son, Gershom. And Zipporah hastened and took of the sharp rocks that were there, And she circumcised her son, and delivered her husband and her son from the hand of the angel of the Lord. And Aaron, the son of Amram, the brother of Moses, was in Egypt walking at the riverside on that day. And the Lord appeared to him in that place, and he said to him, Go now toward Moses in the wilderness. And he went and met him in the mountain of God, and he kissed him. And Aaron lifted up his eyes, and saw Zipporah, the wife of Moses, and her children. And he said unto Moses, Who are these unto thee? And Moses said unto him, They are my wife and sons, which God gave to me in Midian. And the thing grieved Aaron on account of the woman and her children. And Aaron said to Moses, Send away the woman and her children, that they may go to her father's house. And Moses hearkened to the words of Aaron, and did so. And Zipporah returned with her children, and they went to the house of Rule, and remained there until the time arrived when the Lord had visited his people and brought them forth from Egypt, from the hand of Pharaoh. And Moses and Aaron came to Egypt, to the community of the children of Israel, and they spoke to them all the words of the Lord. And the people rejoiced, an exceeding great rejoicing. And Moses and Aaron rose up early on the next day, and they went to the house of Pharaoh, and they took in their hands the stick of God. And when they came to the king's gate, two young lions were confined there with iron instruments, and no person went out or came in from before them, unless those whom the king ordered to come, when the conjurers came, and withdrew the lions by their incantations, and this brought them to the king. And Moses hastened, and lifted up the stick upon the lions, and he loosed them. And Moses and Aaron came into the king's house. The lions also came with them in joy, and they followed them and rejoiced, as a dog rejoices over his master when he comes from the field. And when Pharaoh saw this thing, he was astonished at it, and he was greatly terrified at the report, for their appearance was like the appearance of the children of God. And Pharaoh said to Moses, What do you require? And they answered him, saying, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent us to thee, to say, Send forth my people that they may serve me. And when Pharaoh heard their words, he was greatly terrified before them, and he said to them, Go today, and come back to me tomorrow. And they did according to the word of the king. And when they'd gone, Pharaoh sent for Balaam the magician, and to Jans and Jambres his sons, and to all the magicians and conjurers and counsellors which belonged to the king. And they all came and sat before the king. And the king told them all the words which Moses and his brother Aaron had spoken to him. And the magicians said to the king, But how came the men to thee on account of the lions which were confined at the gate? And the king said, Because they lifted up their rod against the lions and loosed them and came to me. And the lions also rejoiced at them as a dog rejoices to meet his master. And Balaam, the son of Beor the magician, answered the king, saying, These are none else than magicians like ourselves. Now therefore send for them, and let them come, and we will try them. And the king did so. And in the morning Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron to come before the king. And they took the rod of God. 
And they came to the king and spoke to him, saying, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Send my people that they may serve me. And the king said to them, But who will believe you that you are the messengers of God, and that you come to me by his order? Now therefore give a wonder or sign in this matter, and then the words which you speak will be believed. And Aaron hastened and threw the rod out of his hand before Pharaoh and before his servants, and the rod turned into a serpent. And the sorcerers saw this, and they cast each man his rod upon the ground, and they became serpents. And the serpent of Aaron's rod lifted up its head and opened its mouth to swallow the rods of the magicians. And Balaam the magician answered and said, This thing has been from days of old that a serpent should swallow its fellow, and that living things devour each other. Now therefore restore it to a rod as it was at first, and we will also restore our rods as they were at first. And if thy rod shall swallow our rods, then shall we know that the Spirit of God is in thee. And if not, thou art only an artificer like unto ourselves. And Aaron hastened and stretched forth his hand and caught hold of the serpent's tail, and it became a rod in his hand. And the sorcerers did the like with their rods, and they got hold, each man the tail of his serpent, and they became rods as at first. And when they were restored to rods, the rod of Aaron swallowed up their rods. And when the king saw this thing, he ordered the book of records that related to the kings of Egypt to be brought. And they brought the book of records, the chronicles of the kings of Egypt, in which all the idols of Egypt were inscribed. For they thought of finding therein the name of Jehovah, but they found it not. And Pharaoh said to Moses and Aaron, Behold, I have not found the name of your God written in this book, and his name I know not. And the counselors and wise men answered the king, We have heard that the God of the Hebrews is a son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. And Pharaoh turned to Moses and Aaron and said to them, I know not the Lord whom you have declared, neither will I send his people. And they answered and said to the king, The Lord God of gods is his name. And he proclaimed his name over us from the days of our ancestors, and sent us, saying, Go to Pharaoh and say unto him, Send my people, that they may serve me. Now therefore send us, that we may take a journey for three days in the wilderness, and there may sacrifice to him. For from the days of our going down to Egypt, he has not taken from our hands either burnt offering, oblation, or sacrifice. And if thou wilt not send us, his anger will be kindled against thee, and he will smite Egypt either with the plague or with the sword. And Pharaoh said to them, Tell me now his power and his might. And they said to him, He created the heaven and the earth, the seas and all their fishes. He formed the light, created the darkness, caused rain upon the earth and watered it, and made the herbage and grass to sprout. He created man and beast and the animals of the forest, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, and by his mouth they live and die. Surely he created thee in thy mother's womb, and put into thee the breath of life, and reared thee and placed thee upon the royal throne of Egypt. And he will take thy breath and soul from thee, and return thee to the ground whence thou wast taken. And the anger of the king was kindled at their words, and he said to them, But who amongst all the gods of nations can do this? My river is mine own and I have made it for myself. And he drove them from him. And he ordered the labor upon Israel to be more severe than it was yesterday and before. And Moses and Aaron went out from the king's presence, and they saw the children of Israel in an evil condition, for the taskmasters had made their labor exceedingly heavy. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Why hast thou ill-treated thy people? 
For since I came to speak to Pharaoh what thou didst send me for, he has exceedingly ill used the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, thou wilt see that with an outstretched hand and heavy plagues, Pharaoh will send the children of Israel from his land. And Moses and Aaron dwelt amongst their brethren the children of Israel in Egypt. And as for the children of Israel, the Egyptians embittered their lives with the heavy work which they imposed upon them. Jasher chapter 80 And at the end of two years, the Lord again sent Moses to Pharaoh to bring forth the children of Israel and to send them out of the land of Egypt. And Moses went and came to the house of Pharaoh, and he spoke to him the words of the Lord who had sent him. But Pharaoh would not hearken to the voice of the Lord. And God roused his might in Egypt upon Pharaoh and his subjects. And God smote Pharaoh and his people with very great and sore plagues. And the Lord sent by the hand of Aaron and turned all the waters of Egypt into blood with all their streams and rivers. And when an Egyptian came to drink and draw water, he looked into his pitcher, and behold, all the water was turned into blood. And when he came to drink from his cup, the water in the cup became blood. And when a woman kneaded her dough and cooked her victuals, their appearance was turned to that of blood. And the Lord sent again and caused all their waters to bring forth frogs. And all the frogs came into the houses of the Egyptians. And when the Egyptians drank, their bellies were filled with frogs and they danced in their bellies as they dance when in the river. And all their drinking water and cooking water turned to frogs. Also when they lay in their beds, their perspiration bred frogs. Notwithstanding all this, the anger of the Lord did not turn from them. And his hand was stretched out against all the Egyptians to smite them with every heavy plague. And he sent and smote their dust to lice. And the lice became in Egypt at the height of two cubits upon the earth. The lice were also very numerous in the flesh of man and beast, in all the inhabitants of Egypt. Also upon the king and queen the Lord sent the lice. And it grieved Egypt exceedingly on account of the lice. Notwithstanding this, the anger of the Lord did not turn away, and his hand was still stretched out. Over Egypt. And the Lord sent all kinds of beasts of the field into Egypt, and they came and destroyed all Egypt, man and beast and trees, and all things that were in Egypt. And the Lord sent fiery serpents, scorpions, mice, weasels, toads, together with others creeping in dust, flies, hornets, fleas, bugs, and gnats, each swarm according to its kind and all reptiles and winged animals, according to their kind, came to Egypt and grieved the Egyptians exceedingly. And the fleas and flies came into the eyes and ears of the Egyptians, and the hornet came upon them and drove them away, and they removed from it into their inner rooms, and it pursued them. And when the Egyptians hid themselves on account of the swarm of animals, they locked their doors after them. And God ordered the Salina, which was in the sea, to come up and go into Egypt. And she had long arms, ten cubits in length of the cubit of a man. And she went upon the roofs and uncovered the raftering and flooring and cut them, and stretched forth her arm into the house and removed the lock and the bolt and opened the houses of Egypt. Afterward came the swarm of animals into the houses of Egypt, and the swarm of animals destroyed the Egyptians, and it grieved them exceedingly. Notwithstanding this, the anger of the Lord did not turn away from the Egyptians, and his hand was stretched forth against them. And God sent the pestilence, and the pestilence pervaded Egypt in the horses and asses and in the camels in herds of oxen and sheep and in man, 
And when the Egyptians rose up early in the morning to take their cattle to pasture, they found all their cattle dead. And there remained of the cattle of the Egyptians only one in ten. And of the cattle belonging to Israel in Goshen, not one died. And God sent a burning inflammation in the flesh of the Egyptians, which burst their skins. And it became a severe itch in all the Egyptians from the soles of their feet to the crowns of their heads. And many boils were in their flesh, that their flesh wasted away until they became rotten and putrid. Notwithstanding this, the anger of the Lord did not turn away, and his hand was still stretched out over all Egypt. And the Lord sent a very heavy hail, which smote their vines and broke their fruit trees and dried them up that they fell upon them. Also every green herb became dry and perished, for a mingling fire descended amidst the hail. Therefore the hail and fire consumed all things. Also men and beasts that were found abroad perished of the flames of fire and of the hail, and all the young lions were exhausted. And the Lord sent and brought numerous locusts into Egypt, the Chasel, Salom, Chargol, and Chagol, locusts each of its kind, which devoured all that the hail had left remaining. Then the Egyptians rejoiced at the locusts, although they consumed the produce of the field, and they caught them in abundance and salted them for food. And the Lord turned a mighty wind of the sea, which took away all the locusts, even those that were salted and thrust them into the Red Sea. Not one locust remained within the boundaries of Egypt. And God sent darkness upon Egypt, that the whole land of Egypt and Pathros became dark for three days, so that a man could not see his hand when he lifted it to his mouth. At that time died many of the people of Israel who had rebelled against the Lord and who would not hearken to Moses and Aaron and believed not in them that God had sent them, and who had said, We will not go forth from Egypt, lest we perish with hunger in a desolate wilderness, and who would not hearken to the voice of Moses. And the Lord plagued them in the three days of darkness, and the Israelites buried them in those days, without the Egyptians knowing of them or rejoicing over them. And the darkness was very great in Egypt for three days. And any person who was standing when the darkness came remained standing in his place. And he that was sitting remained sitting. And he that was lying continued lying in the same state. And he that was walking remained sitting upon the ground in the same spot. And this thing happened to all the Egyptians until the darkness had passed away. And the days of darkness passed away. And the Lord sent Moses and Aaron to the children of Israel, saying, Celebrate your feast and make your Passover. For behold, I come in the midst of the night amongst all the Egyptians, and I will smite all their firstborn, from the firstborn of a man to the firstborn of a beast. And when I see your Passover, I will pass over you. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, thus did they in that night. And it came to pass in the middle of the night that the Lord went forth in the midst of Egypt and smote all the firstborn of the Egyptians, from the firstborn of man to the firstborn of beast. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry throughout Egypt in that night, for there was not a house in which there was not a corpse. Also the likenesses of the firstborn of Egypt, which were carved in the walls at their houses, were destroyed and fell to the ground. Even the bones of their firstborn who had died before this and whom they had buried in their houses were raked up by the dogs of Egypt on that night and dragged before the Egyptians and cast before them. And all the Egyptians saw this evil which had suddenly come upon them, and all the Egyptians cried out with a loud voice, and all the families of Egypt wept upon that night, each man for his son and each man for his daughter being the firstborn, 
and the tumult of Egypt was heard at a distance on that night. And Bathia, the daughter of Pharaoh, went forth with the king on that night to seek Moses and Aaron in their houses. And they found them in their houses, eating and drinking and rejoicing with all Israel. And Bathia said to Moses, Is this the reward for the good that I have done to thee, who have reared thee and stretched thee out? And thou hast brought this evil upon me and my father's house. And Moses said to her, Surely ten plagues did the Lord bring upon Egypt. Did any evil accrue to thee from any of them? Did any one of them affect thee? And she said, No. And Moses said to her, Although thou art the firstborn to thy mother, thou shalt not die, and no evil shall reach thee in the midst of Egypt. And she said, What advantage is it to me when I see the king, my brother, and all his household and subjects in this evil, whose firstborn perish with all the firstborn of Egypt? And Moses said to her, Surely thy brother and his household and subjects, the families of Egypt, would not hearken to the words of the Lord. Therefore did this evil come upon them. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, approached Moses and Aaron and some of the children of Israel who were with them in that place. And he prayed to them, saying, Rise up and take your brethren, all the children of Israel who are in the land, with their sheep and oxen and all belonging to them. They shall leave nothing remaining. Only pray for me to the Lord your God. And Moses said to Pharaoh, Behold, though thou art thy mother's firstborn, yet fear not, for thou wilt not die. For the Lord has commanded that thou shalt live in order to show thee his great might and strong stretched out arm. And Pharaoh ordered the children of Israel to be sent away. And all the Egyptians strengthened themselves to send them, for they said, We are all perishing. And all the Egyptians sent the Israelites forth with great riches, sheep and oxen and precious things, according to the oath of the Lord between him and our father Abraham. And the children of Israel delayed going forth at night. And when the Egyptians came to them to bring them out, they said to them, Are we thieves that we should go forth at night? And the children of Israel asked of the Egyptians vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments. And the children of Israel stripped the Egyptians. And Moses hastened and rose up and went to the river of Egypt and brought up from thence the coffin of Joseph and took it with him. The children of Israel also brought up each man his father's coffin with him and each man the coffins of his tribe. Jasher chapter 81 And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about six hundred thousand men on foot, beside the little ones and their wives. Also a mixed multitude went up with them, and flocks and herds, even much cattle. And the sojourning of the children of Israel, who dwelt in the land of Egypt in hard labor, was two hundred and ten years. And at the end of two hundred and ten years, the Lord brought forth the children of Israel from Egypt with a strong hand. And the children of Israel traveled from Egypt and from Goshen and from Ramesses and encamped in Succoth on the fifteenth day of the first month. And the Egyptians buried all their firstborn whom the Lord had smitten, and all the Egyptians buried their slain for three days. And the children of Israel traveled from Succoth and encamped in Etham at the end of the wilderness. And on the third day after the Egyptians had buried their firstborn, many men rose up from Egypt and went after Israel to make them return to Egypt, for they repented that they had sent the Israelites away from their servitude. And one man said to his neighbor, Surely Moses and Aaron spoke to Pharaoh, saying, We will go a three days' journey in the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God. Now therefore let us rise up early in the morning and cause them to return. And it shall be that if they return with us to Egypt to their masters, then shall we know that there is faith in them. But if they will not return, then will we fight with them and make them come back with great power and a strong hand. 
And all the nobles of Pharaoh rose up in the morning, and with them about seven hundred thousand men. And they went forth from Egypt on that day, and came to the place where the children of Israel were. And all the Egyptians saw, and behold, Moses and Aaron and all the children of Israel were sitting before Pi-Hiroth, eating and drinking and celebrating the feast of the Lord. And all the Egyptians said to the children of Israel, Surely you said, We will go a journey for three days in the wilderness and sacrifice to our God and return. Now therefore this day makes five days since you went. Why do you not return to your masters? And Moses and Aaron answered them, saying, Because the Lord our God has testified in us, saying, You shall no more return to Egypt, but we will betake ourselves to a land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord our God had sworn to our ancestors to give to us. And when the nobles of Egypt saw that the children of Israel did not hearken to them to return to Egypt, they girded themselves to fight with Israel. And the Lord strengthened the hearts of the children of Israel over the Egyptians, that they gave them a severe beating. And the battle was sore upon the Egyptians. And all the Egyptians fled from before the children of Israel, for many of them perished by the hand of Israel. And the nobles of Pharaoh went to Egypt and told Pharaoh, saying, The children of Israel have fled and will no more return to Egypt, and in this manner did Moses and Aaron speak to us. And Pharaoh heard this thing, and his heart and the hearts of all his subjects were turned against Israel. And they repented that they had sent Israel. And all the Egyptians advised Pharaoh to pursue the children of Israel to make them come back to their burdens. And they said each man to his brother, What is this which we have done, that we have sent Israel from our servitude? And the Lord strengthened the hearts of all the Egyptians to pursue the Israelites. For the Lord desired to overthrow the Egyptians in the Red Sea. And Pharaoh rose up and harnessed his chariot. And he ordered all the Egyptians to assemble. Not one man was left, excepting the little ones and the women. And all the Egyptians went forth with Pharaoh to pursue the children of Israel. And the camp of Egypt was an exceedingly large and heavy camp, about ten hundred thousand men. And the whole of this camp went and pursued the children of Israel to bring them back to Egypt. And they reached them encamping by the Red Sea. And the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and beheld all the Egyptians pursuing them. And the children of Israel were greatly terrified at them. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord. And on account of the Egyptians, the children of Israel divided themselves into four divisions. And they were divided in their opinions, for they were afraid of the Egyptians. And Moses spoke to each of them. The first division was of the children of Reuben, Simeon, and Issachar, and they resolved to cast themselves into the sea, for they were exceedingly afraid of the Egyptians. And Moses said to them, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will effect this day for you. The second division was of the children of Zebulun, Benjamin, and Naphtali, and they resolved to go back to Egypt with the Egyptians. And Moses said to them, Fear not, for as you have seen the Egyptians this day, so shall you see them no more for ever. The third division was of the children of Judah and Joseph, and they resolved to go to meet the Egyptians to fight with them. And Moses said to them, Stand in your places, for the Lord will fight for you, and you shall remain silent. And the fourth division was of the children of Levi, Gad and Asher, and they resolved to go into the midst of the Egyptians to confound them. And Moses said to them, Remain in your stations, and fear not. Only call unto the Lord, that he may save you out of their hands. After this Moses rose up from amidst the people, and he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord God of the whole earth, Save now thy people whom thou didst bring forth from Egypt, and let not the Egyptians boast that power and might are theirs. So the Lord said to Moses, Why dost thou cry unto me? 
speak to the children of Israel that they shall proceed. And do thou stretch out thy rod upon the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall pass through it. And Moses did so, and he lifted up his rod upon the sea and divided it. And the waters of the sea were divided into twelve parts, and the children of Israel passed through on foot with shoes as a man would pass through a prepared road. And the Lord manifested to the children of Israel his wonders in Egypt and in the sea by the hand of Moses and Aaron. And when the children of Israel had entered the sea, the Egyptians came after them, and the waters of the sea resumed upon them, and they all sank in the water, and not one man was left excepting Pharaoh who gave thanks to the Lord and believed in him. Therefore the Lord did not cause him to perish at that time with the Egyptians. And the Lord ordered an angel to take him from amongst the Egyptians, who cast him upon the land of Nineveh, and he reigned over it for a long time. And on that day the Lord saved Israel from the hand of Egypt, And all the children of Israel saw that the Egyptians had perished, and they beheld the great hand of the Lord in what he had performed in Egypt and in the sea. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord on the day when the Lord caused the Egyptians to fall before them. And all Israel sang in concert, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he is greatly exalted. The horse and his rider has he cast into the sea. Behold, it is written in the book of the law of God. After this, the children of Israel proceeded on their journey and encamped in Marah. And the Lord gave to the children of Israel statutes and judgments in that place in Marah. And the Lord commanded the children of Israel to walk in all his ways and to serve him. And they journeyed from Marah and came to Elim. And in Elam were twelve springs of water and seventy date trees, and the children encamped there by the waters. And they journeyed from Elam and came to the wilderness of Sin on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departure from Egypt. At that time the Lord gave the manna to the children of Israel to eat, and the Lord caused food to rain from heaven for the children of Israel day by day. And the children of Israel ate the manna for forty years, all the days that they were in the wilderness, until they came to the land of Canaan to possess it. And they proceeded from the wilderness of Sin and encamped in Elash. And they proceeded from Elash and encamped in Rephidim. And when the children of Israel were in Rephidim, Amalek, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, the brother of Zepho, came to fight with Israel. And he brought with him 801,000 men, magicians and conjurers. And he prepared for battle with Israel in Rephidim. And they carried on a great and severe battle against Israel. And the Lord delivered Amalek and his people into the hands of Moses and the children of Israel, and into the hand of Joshua, the son of Nun, the Ephrathite, the servant of Moses. And the children of Israel smote Amalek and his people at the edge of the sword. But the battle was very sore upon the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, Write this thing as a memorial for the inner book, and place it in the hand of Joshua the son of Nun thy servant. And thou shalt command the children of Israel, saying, When thou shalt come to the land of Canaan, Thou shalt utterly efface the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses did so, and he took the book and wrote upon it these words, saying, Remember what Amalek has done to thee in the road when thou wentest forth from Egypt, who met thee in the road and smote thy rear, even those that were feeble behind thee when thou wast faint and weary. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God gave thee for an inheritance to possess it, 
that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. And the king who shall have pity on Amalek, or upon his memory, or upon his seed, behold, I will require it of him, and I will cut him off from amongst his people. And Moses wrote all these things in a book, and he enjoined the children of Israel respecting all these matters. Jasher chapter 82 And the children of Israel proceeded from Rephidim, and they encamped in the wilderness of Sinai, in the third month from their going forth from Egypt. At that time came Ruel the Midianite, the father-in-law of Moses, with Zipporah his daughter and her two sons. For he had heard of the wonders of the Lord which he had done to Israel, that he had delivered them from the hand of Egypt. And Ruel came to Moses to the wilderness where he was encamped, where was the mountain of God. And Moses went forth to meet his father-in-law with great honor, and all Israel was with him. And Ruel and his children remained amongst the Israelites for many days. And Ruel knew the Lord from that day forward. And in the third month from the children of Israel's departure from Egypt on the sixth day thereof, the Lord gave to Israel the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. And all Israel heard all these commandments, and all Israel rejoiced exceedingly in the Lord on that day. And the glory of the Lord rested upon Mount Sinai, and he called to Moses. And Moses came in the midst of a cloud and ascended the mountain. And Moses was upon the mount forty days and forty nights. He ate no bread and drank no water. And the Lord instructed him in the statutes and judgments in order to teach the children of Israel. And the Lord wrote the Ten Commandments which he had commanded the children of Israel upon two tablets of stone which he gave to Moses to command the children of Israel. And at the end of forty days and forty nights, when the Lord had finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, then the Lord gave to Moses the tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. And when the children of Israel saw that Moses tarried to come down from the mount, they gathered around Aaron and said, As for this man Moses, we know not what has become of him. Now therefore, rise up, Make unto us a God who shall go before us, so that thou shalt not die. And Aaron was greatly afraid of the people. And he ordered them to bring him gold, and he made it into a molten calf for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, before he had come down from the mount, Get thee down, for thy people whom thou didst bring forth from Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have made to themselves a molten calf, and have bowed down to it. Now therefore leave me, that I may consume them from off the earth, for they are a stiff-necked people. And Moses besought the countenance of the Lord, and he prayed to the Lord for the people on account of the calf which they had made. And he afterward descended from the mount, and in his hands were the two tablets of stone which God had given him to command the Israelites. And when Moses approached the camp and saw the calf which the people had made, the anger of Moses was kindled, and he broke the tablets under the mount. And Moses came to the camp, and he took the calf and burned it with fire, and ground it till it became fine dust, and strewed it upon the water, and gave it to the Israelites to drink. And there died of the people by the swords of each other about three thousand men who had made the calf. And on the morrow Moses said to the people, I will go up to the Lord. Peradventure I may make atonement for your sins which you have sinned to the Lord. And Moses again went up to the Lord, and he remained with the Lord forty days and forty nights. And during the forty days did Moses entreat the Lord in behalf of the children of Israel. And the Lord hearkened to the prayer of Moses. And the Lord was entreated of him in behalf of Israel. Then spake the Lord to Moses to hew two stone tablets 
and to bring them up to the Lord, who would write upon them the Ten Commandments. Now Moses did so. And he came down and hewed the two tablets and went up to Mount Sinai to the Lord. And the Lord wrote the Ten Commandments upon the tablets. And Moses remained yet with the Lord forty days and forty nights. And the Lord instructed him in statutes and judgments to impart to Israel. And the Lord commanded him, respecting the children of Israel, that they should make a sanctuary for the Lord, that his name might rest therein. And the Lord showed him the likeness of the sanctuary and the likeness of all its vessels. And at the end of the forty days, Moses came down from the mount, and the two tablets were in his hand. And Moses came to the children of Israel and spoke to them all the words of the Lord. And he taught them laws, statutes, and judgments which the Lord had taught him. And Moses told the children of Israel the word of the Lord, that a sanctuary should be made for him to dwell amongst the children of Israel. And the people rejoiced greatly at all the good which the Lord had spoken to them through Moses. And they said, We will do all that the Lord has spoken to thee. And the people rose up like one man, and they made generous offerings to the sanctuary of the Lord. And each man brought the offering of the Lord for the work of the sanctuary and for all its service. And all the children of Israel brought each man of all that was found in his possession for the work of the sanctuary of the Lord gold, silver, and brass, and everything that was serviceable for the sanctuary. And all the wise men who were practiced in work came and made the sanctuary of the Lord according to all that the Lord had commanded, every man in the work in which he had been practiced. And all the wise men in heart made the sanctuary and its furniture and all the vessels for the holy service as the Lord had commanded Moses. And the work of the sanctuary of the tabernacle was completed at the end of five months. And the children of Israel did all that the Lord had commanded Moses. And they brought the sanctuary and all its furniture to Moses, like unto the representation which the Lord had shown to Moses, so did the children of Israel. And Moses saw the work, and behold, they did it as the Lord had commanded him. So Moses Bless them. Jasher chapter 83 And in the twelfth month, in the twenty-third day of the month, Moses took Aaron and his sons, and he dressed them in their garments, and anointed them, and did unto them as the Lord had commanded him. And Moses brought up all the offerings which the Lord had on that day commanded him. Moses afterward took Aaron and his sons and said to them, for seven days shall you remain at the door of the tabernacle, for thus am I commanded. And Aaron and his sons did all that the Lord had commanded them through Moses, and they remained for seven days at the door of the tabernacle. And on the eighth day, being the first day of the first month, in the second year from the Israelites' departure from Egypt, Moses erected the sanctuary. And Moses put up all the furniture of the tabernacle, and all the furniture of the sanctuary, and he did all that the Lord had commanded him. Moses called to Aaron and his sons, and they brought the burnt offering and the sin offering for themselves and the children of Israel, as the Lord had commanded Moses. On that day, the two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, took strange fire and brought it before the Lord who had not commanded them. And a fire went forth from before the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord on that day. Then on the day when Moses had completed to erect the sanctuary, the princes of the children of Israel began to bring their offerings before the Lord for the dedication of the altar. And they brought up their offerings, each prince for one day, a prince each day for twelve days. And all the offerings which they brought, each man in his day, one silver charger weighing one hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering. 
one spoon weighing ten shekels of gold, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offering, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of a year old. Thus did the twelve princes of Israel day by day, each man in his day. And it was after this, in the thirteenth day of the month, that Moses commanded the children of Israel to observe the Passover. And the children of Israel kept the Passover in its season in the fourteenth day of the month. As the Lord had commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And in the second month, on the first day thereof, the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Number the heads of all the males of the children of Israel, from twenty years old and upward, thou and thy brother Aaron and the twelve princes of Israel. And Moses did so, and Aaron came with the twelve princes of Israel, and they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. And the numbers of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from twenty years old and upward were six hundred and three thousand five hundred and fifty. But the children of Levi were not numbered amongst their brethren, the children of Israel. And the number of all the males of the children of Israel from one month old and upward was twenty two thousand two hundred and seventy three. And the number of the children of Levi from one month old and above, was twenty-two thousand. And Moses placed the priests and the Levites, each man to his service and to his burden, to serve the sanctuary of the tabernacle, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And on the twentieth day of the month, the cloud was taken away from the tabernacle of testimony. At that time, the children of Israel continued their journey from the wilderness of Sinai, And they took a journey of three days, and the cloud rested upon the wilderness of Paran. There the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, for they had provoked the Lord in asking him for meat that they might eat. And the Lord hearkened to their voice, and gave them meat which they ate for one month. But after this the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he smote them with a great slaughter, and they were buried there in that place. And the children of Israel called that place Kibroth Hadavah, because there they buried the people that lusted flesh. And they departed from Kibroth Hadavah and pitched in Hazeroth, which is in the wilderness of Paran. And whilst the children of Israel were in Hazeroth, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Miriam on account of Moses and she became leprous, white as snow. And she was confined without the camp for seven days until she had been received again after her leprosy. And the children of Israel afterward departed from Hazeroth and pitched in the end of the wilderness of Paran. At that time the Lord spoke to Moses to send twelve men from the children of Israel, one man to a tribe, to go and explore the land of Canaan. And Moses sent the twelve men, and they came to the land of Canaan to search and examine it. And they explored the whole land from the wilderness of Sin to Rechob, as thou comest to Chamoth. And at the end of forty days they came to Moses and Aaron, and they brought him word as it was in their hearts. And ten of the men brought up an evil report to the children of Israel of the land which they had explored, saying, It is better for us to return to Egypt than to go to this land, a land that consumes its inhabitants. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were of those that explored the land, said, The land is exceedingly good. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us to this land and give it to us, for it is a land flowing with milk and honey. But the children of Israel would not hearken to them. And they hearkened to the words of the ten men who had brought up an evil report of the land. And the Lord heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, and he was angry and swore, saying, 
Surely not one man of this wicked generation shall see the land from twenty years old and upward, excepting Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But surely this wicked generation shall perish in this wilderness, and their children shall come to the land, and they shall possess it. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness for forty years until the end of that wicked generation, because they did not follow the Lord. And the people dwelt in the wilderness of Paran a long time, and they afterward proceeded to the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Jasher chapter 84 At that time, Korah, the son of Jetzer, the son of Kehath, the son of Levi, took many men of the children of Israel. And they rose up and quarreled with Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation. And the Lord was angry with them. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their houses and all belonging to them, and all the men belonging to Korah. And after this, God made the people go round by the way of Mount Seir for a long time. At that time, the Lord said unto Moses, Provoke not a war against the children of Esau, for I will not give to you of anything belonging to them, as much as the sole of the foot could tread upon, for I have given Mount Seir for an inheritance to Esau. Therefore did the children of Esau fight against the children of Seir in former times, and the Lord had delivered the children of Seir into the hands of the children of Esau, and destroyed them from before them. And the children of Esau dwelt in their stead unto this day. Therefore the Lord said to the children of Israel, Fight not against the children of Esau your brethren, for nothing in their land belongs to you. But you may buy food of them for money and eat it, and you may buy water of them for money and drink it. And the children of Israel did according to the word of the Lord. And the children of Israel went about the wilderness, going round by the way of Mount Sinai for a long time, and touched not the children of Esau. And they continued in that district for nineteen years. At that time died Latinus, king of the children of Chittim, in the forty-fifth year of his reign, which is the fourteenth year of the children of Israel's departure from Egypt. And they buried him in his place, which he had built for himself in the land of Chittim. And Abimnus reigned in his place for thirty-eight years. And the children of Israel passed the boundary of the children of Esau in those days at the end of nineteen years. And they came and passed on the road of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said to Moses, Besiege not Moab, and do not fight against them, for I will give you nothing of their land. And the children of Israel passed the road of the wilderness of Moab for nineteen years, and they did not fight against them. And in the thirty-sixth year of the children of Israel's departing from Egypt, the Lord smote the heart of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and he waged war and went forth to fight against the children of Moab. And Sihon sent messengers to Beor, the son of Janius, the son of Balaam, counselor to the king of Egypt, and to Balaam his son, to curse Moab, in order that it might be delivered into the hand of Sion. And the messengers went and brought Beor the son of Janias and Balaam his son from Pithor in Mesopotamia. So Beor and Balaam his son came to the city of Sion, and they cursed Moab and their king in the presence of Sion, king of the Amorites. So Sion went out with his whole army, and he went to Moab and fought against them, and he subdued them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands, and Sion slew the king of Moab. And Sion took all the cities of Moab in the battle. He also took Heshbon from them, for Heshbon was one of the cities of Moab. And Sion placed his princes and his nobles in Heshbon, and Heshbon belonged to Sion in those days. Therefore the parable speakers, Beor and Balaam his son, uttered these words, saying, Come unto Heshbon, 
the city of Sihon will be built and established. Woe unto thee, Moab! Thou art lost, O people of Chemosh. Behold, it is written upon the book of the law of God. And when Sihon had conquered Moab, he placed guards in the cities which he had taken from Moab. And a considerable number of the children of Moab fell in battle into the hand of Sihon. And he made a great capture of them, sons and daughters, and he slew their king. So Sihon turned back to his own land. And Sion gave numerous presents of silver and gold to Beor and Balaam his son, and he dismissed them, and they went to Mesopotamia, to their home and country. At that time all the children of Israel passed from the road of the wilderness of Moab and returned and surrounded the wilderness of Edom. So the whole congregation came to the wilderness of Sin in the first month of the fortieth year from their departure from Egypt. And the children of Israel dwelt there in Kadesh of the wilderness of Sin. And Miriam died there, and she was buried there. At that time Moses sent messengers to Hadad, king of Edom, saying, Thus says thy brother Israel, Let me pass, I pray thee, through thy land. We will not pass through field or vineyard. We will not drink the water of the well. We will walk in the king's road. And Edom said to him, Thou shalt not pass through my country. And Edom went forth to meet the children of Israel with a mighty people. And the children of Esau refused to let the children of Israel pass through their land. So the Israelites removed from them and fought not against them. For before this the Lord had commanded the children of Israel, saying, You shall not fight against the children of Esau. Therefore the Israelites removed from them and did not fight against them. So the children of Israel departed from Kadesh, and all the people came to Mount Hor. At that time the Lord said to Moses, Tell thy brother Aaron that he shall die there, for he shall not come to the land which I have given to the children of Israel. And Aaron went up at the command of the Lord to Mount Hor in the fortieth year, in the fifth month, in the first day of the month. And Aaron was one hundred and twenty-three years old when he died in Mount Hor. Jasher chapter 85 And King Arad the Canaanite, who dwelt in the south, heard that the Israelites had come by way of the spies, and he arranged his forces to fight against the Israelites. And the children of Israel were greatly afraid of him, for he had a great and heavy army. So the children of Israel resolved to return to Egypt. And the children of Israel turned back about the distance of three days' journey unto Masareth benai Jaakim, for they were greatly afraid on account of the king Arad. And the children of Israel would not get back to their places, so they remained in benai Jaakim for thirty days. And when the children of Levi saw that the children of Israel would not turn back, they were jealous for the sake of the Lord. And they rose up and fought against the Israelites their brethren, and slew of them a great body, and forced them to turn back to their place, Mount Hor. And when they returned, King Arad was still arranging his host for battle against the Israelites. And Israel vowed a vow, saying, if thou wilt deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, and he delivered the Canaanites into their hand, and he utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Hormah. And the children of Israel journeyed from Mount Hor and pitched in Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth and they pitched at Ej Abarim in the border of Moab. And the children of Israel sent to Moab, saying, Let us pass now through thy land into our place. But the children of Moab would not suffer the children of Israel to pass through their land, for the children of Moab were greatly afraid, lest the children of Israel should do unto them as King Sihon, king of the Amorites, had done to them, who had taken their land and had slain many of them.
Therefore Moab would not suffer the Israelites to pass through his land. And the Lord commanded the children of Israel, saying that they should not fight against Moab. So the Israelites removed from Moab. And the children of Israel journeyed from the border of Moab. And they came to the other side of Arnon, the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. And they pitched in the border of Sion, king of the Amorites, in the wilderness of Kedemoth. And the children of Israel sent messengers to Sion, king of the Amorites, saying, Let us pass through thy land. We will not turn into the fields or into the vineyards. We will go along by the king's highway until we have passed thy border. But Sihon would not suffer the Israelites to pass. So Sihon collected all the people of the Amorites and went forth into the wilderness to meet the children of Israel. And he fought against Israel in Jahaz. And the Lord delivered Sihon, king of the Amorites, into the hand of the children of Israel. And Israel smote all the people of Sihon with the edge of the sword and avenged the cause of Moab. And the children of Israel took possession of the land of Zion from Aram unto Jabuk unto the children of Ammon. And they took all the spoil of the cities. And Israel took all these cities. And Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites. And the children of Israel resolved to fight against the children of Ammon, to take their land also. So the Lord said to the children of Israel, Do not besiege the children of Ammon, neither stir up battle against them, for I will give nothing to you of their land. And the children of Israel hearkened to the word of the Lord, and did not fight against the children of Ammon. And the children of Israel turned and went up by the way of Bashan to the land of Og, king of Bashan. And Og, the king of Bashan, went out to meet the Israelites in battle. And he had with him many valiant men and a very strong force from the people of the Amorites. And Og, king of Bashan, was a very powerful man. But Naaron, his son, was exceedingly powerful, even stronger than he was. And Og said in his heart, Behold, now the whole camp of Israel takes up a space of three parsa. Now will I smite them at once, without sword or spear. And Og went up Mount Jahaz, and took therefrom one large stone, the length of which was three parsa. And he placed it on his head, and resolved to throw it upon the camp of the children of Israel, to smite all the Israelites with that stone. And the angel of the Lord came and pierced the stone upon the head of Og. And the stone fell upon the neck of Og, that Og fell to the earth on account of the weight of the stone upon his neck. At that time the Lord said to the children of Israel, Be not afraid of him, for I have given him and all his people and all his land into your hand, and you shall do to him as you did to Sihon. And Moses went down to him with a small number of the children of Israel. And Moses smote Og with a stick at the ankles of his feet and slew him. The children of Israel afterward pursued the children of Og and all his people, and they beat and destroyed them till there was no remnant left of them. Moses afterward sent some of the children of Israel to spy out Jazer. For Jezer was a very famous city. And the spies went to Jezer and explored it. And the spies trusted in the Lord, and they fought against the men of Jezer. And these men took Jezer and its villagers, and the Lord delivered them into their hand, and they drove out the Amorites who had been there. And the children of Israel took the land of the two kings of the Amorites, sixty cities which were on the other side of Jordan, from the brook of Arnon unto Mount Hermon. And the children of Israel journeyed and came into the plain of Moab, which is on this side of Jordan, by Jericho. And the children of Moab heard all the evil which the children of Israel had done to the two kings of the Amorites, to Sihon and Og. So all the men of Moab were greatly afraid of the Israelites. 
And the elders of Moab said, Behold, the two kings of the Amorites, Sion and Og, who were more powerful than all the kings of the earth, could not stand against the children of Israel. How then can we stand before them? Surely they sent us a message before now to pass through our land on their way, and we would not suffer them. Now they will turn upon us with their heavy swords and destroy us. And Moab was distressed on account of the children of Israel, and they were greatly afraid of them. And they counseled together what was to be done to the children of Israel. And the elders of Moab resolved and took one of their men, Balak, the son of Zippor, the Moabite, and made him king over them at that time. And Balak was a very wise man, And the elders of Moab rose up and sent to the children of Midian to make peace with them. For a great battle and enmity had been in those days between Moab and Midian, from the days of Hadad, the son of Bedad, king of Edom, who smote Midian in the field of Moab, unto these days. And the children of Moab sent to the children of Midian, and they made peace with them. And the elders of Midian came to the land of Moab, to make peace in behalf of the children of Midian. And the elders of Moab counseled with the elders of Midian what to do in order to save their lives from Israel. And all the children of Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now therefore the children of Israel lick up all that are round about us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. For thus did they do to the two kings of the Amorites who are stronger than we are. And the elders of Midian said to Moab, We have heard that at the time when Sion, king of the Amorites, fought against you, when he prevailed over you and took your land, he had sent to Baor the son of Janius, and to Balaam his son from Mesopotamia, and they came and cursed you. Therefore did the hand of Sion prevail over you, that he took your land. Now therefore send you also to Balaam his son for he still remains in his land, and give him his hire, that he may come and curse all the people of whom you are afraid. So the elders of Moab heard this thing, and it pleased them to send to Balaam, the son of Beor. So Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent messengers to Balaam, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Now therefore come, and curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail to fight against them, and drive them out. For I heard that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and whom thou cursest is cursed. So the messengers of Balak went to Balaam, and brought Balaam to curse the people to fight against Moab. And Balaam came to Balak to curse Israel. And the Lord said to Balaam, Curse not this people, for it is blessed. And Balak urged Balaam day by day to curse Israel. But Balaam hearkened not to Balak on account of the word of the Lord, which he had spoken to Balaam. And when Balak saw that Balaam would not accede to his wish, he rose up and went home. And Balaam also returned to his land, and he went from there to Midian. And the children of Israel journeyed from the plain of Moab and pitched by Jordan from Beth Jesimoth even unto Abel Shittim at the end of the plains of Moab. And when the children of Israel abode in the plain of Shittim, they began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And the children of Israel approached Moab, and the children of Moab pitched their tents opposite to the camp of the children of Israel. And the children of Moab were afraid of the children of Israel. And the children of Moab took all their daughters and their wives of beautiful aspect and comely appearance, and dressed them in gold and silver and costly garments. And the children of Moab seated those women at the door of their tents, in order that the children of Israel might see them and turn to them, and not fight against Moab. And the children of Moab did this thing to the children of Israel. And every man placed his wife and daughter at the door of his tent. And all the children of Israel 
saw the act of the children of Moab. And the children of Israel turned to the daughters of Moab and coveted them and went to them. And it came to pass that when a Hebrew came to the door of the tent of Moab and saw a daughter of Moab and desired her in his heart and spoke with her at the door of the tent, that which he desired, whilst they were speaking together, the men of the tent would come out and speak to the Hebrew like unto these words. Surely you know that we are brethren. We are all the descendants of Lot and the descendants of Abraham his brother. Wherefore then will you not remain with us? And wherefore will you not eat our bread and our sacrifice? And when the children of Moab had thus overwhelmed him with their speeches and enticed him by their flattering words, they seated him in the tent and cooked and sacrificed for him, and he ate of their sacrifice and of their bread. They then gave him wine, and he drank and became intoxicated. And they placed before him a beautiful damsel, and he did with her as he liked, for he knew not what he was doing as he had drunk plentifully of wine. Thus did the children of Moab to Israel in that place in the plain of Shittim, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel on account of this matter. And he sent a pestilence amongst them, and there died of the Israelites twenty-four thousand men. Now there was a man of the children of Simeon, whose name was Zimri, the son of Selu, who connected himself with the Midianite Cosbi, the daughter of Zur, king of Midian, in the sight of all the children of Israel. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this wicked thing which Zimri had done. And he took a spear and rose up and went after them and pierced them both and slew them. And the pestilence ceased from the children of Israel. Jasher chapter 86 At that time, after the pestilence, the Lord said to Moses and to Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Number the heads of the whole community of the children of Israel, from twenty years old and upward, all that went forth in the army. And Moses and Eleazar numbered the children of Israel after their families, and the number of all Israel was seven hundred thousand seven hundred and thirty. And the number of the children of Levi from one month old and upward was twenty-three thousand. And amongst these there was not a man of those numbered by Moses and Aaron in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had told them that they would die in the wilderness. So they all died. And not one had been left of them, excepting Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. And it was after this that the Lord said to Moses, Say unto the children of Israel to avenge upon Midian the cause of their brethren, the children of Israel. And Moses did so. And the children of Israel chose from amongst them twelve thousand men, being one thousand to a tribe, and they went to Midian. And the children of Israel warred against Midian, and they slew every male also the five princes of Midian, and Balaam the son of Beor did they slay with the sword. And the children of Israel took the wives of Midian captive with their little ones and their cattle and all belonging to them. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, and they brought it to Moses and to Eleazar to the plains of Moab. And Moses and Eleazar and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them with joy. And they divided all the spoil of Midian. And the children of Israel had been revenged upon Midian for the cause of their brethren, the children of Israel. Jasher chapter 87 At that time the Lord said to Moses, Behold, thy days are approaching to an end. Take now Joshua the son of Nun, thy servant, and place him in the tabernacle, and I will command him. And Moses did so. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of cloud, and the pillar of cloud 
stood at the entrance of the tabernacle. And the Lord commanded Joshua the son of Nun, and said unto him, Be strong and courageous, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel to the land which I swore to give them, and I will be with thee. And Moses said to Joshua, Be strong and courageous, for thou wilt make the children of Israel inherit the land, and the Lord will be with thee. He will not leave thee nor forsake thee. Be not afraid nor disheartened. And Moses called to all the children of Israel and said to them, You have seen all the good which the Lord your God has done for you in the wilderness. Now therefore observe all the words of this law and walk in the way of the Lord your God. Turn not from the way which the Lord has commanded you, either to the right or to the left. And Moses taught the children of Israel statutes and judgments and laws to do in the land as the Lord had commanded him. And he taught them the way of the Lord and his laws. Behold, they are written upon the book of the law of God which he gave to the children of Israel by the hand of Moses. And Moses finished commanding the children of Israel. And the Lord said to him, saying, Go up to the Mount Abarim and die there, and be gathered unto thy people as Aaron thy brother was gathered. And Moses went up as the Lord had commanded him, and he died there in the land of Moab by the order of the Lord, in the fortieth year from the Israelites going forth from the land of Egypt. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for thirty days. And the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were completed. Jasher chapter 88 And it was after the death of Moses that the Lord said to Joshua the son of Nun, saying, Rise up and pass the Jordan to the land which I have given to the children of Israel, and thou shalt make the children of Israel inherit the land. Every place upon which the sole of your feet shall tread shall belong to you, from the wilderness of Lebanon unto the great river, the river of Pirath shall be your boundary. None shall stand up against thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Only be strong and of good courage to observe all the law which Moses commanded thee. Turn not from the way, either to the right or to the left, in order that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. And Joshua commanded the officers of Israel, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare for yourselves provisions, for in three days more you will pass the Jordan to possess the land. And the officers of the children of Israel did so, and they commanded the people, and they did all that Joshua had commanded. And Joshua sent two men to spy out the land of Jericho. And the men went and spied out Jericho. And at the end of seven days, they came to Joshua in the camp and said to him, The Lord has delivered the whole land into our hand, and the inhabitants thereof are melted with fear because of us. And it came to pass after that, that Joshua rose up in the morning, and all Israel with him, and they journeyed from Shittim. And Joshua and all Israel with him passed the Jordan. And Joshua was eighty-two years old when he passed the Jordan with Israel. And the people went up from Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped in Gilgal at the eastern corner of Jericho. And the children of Israel kept the Passover in Gilgal, in the plains of Jericho, on the fourteenth day of the month, as it is written in the law of Moses. And the manna ceased at that time on the morrow of the Passover, and there was no more manna for the children of Israel and they ate of the produce of the land of Canaan. And Jericho was entirely closed against the children of Israel. No one came out or went in. And it was in the second month, on the first day of the month, that the Lord said to Joshua, Rise up, behold, I have given Jericho into thy hand with all the people thereof, and all your fighting men shall go round the city once each day. 
Thus shall you do for six days. And the priests shall blow upon trumpets. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall give a great shouting, that the walls of the city shall fall down. All the people shall go up, every man against his opponent. And Joshua did according to all the Lord had commanded him. And on the seventh day they went round the city seven times, and the priests blew upon the trumpets. And at the seventh round Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has delivered the whole city into our hands. Only the city and all that it contains shall be a curse to the Lord. And keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and brass and iron shall be consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. And the people blew upon trumpets and made a great shouting. And the walls of Jericho fell down. And all the people went up, every man straight before him, and they took the city and utterly destroyed all that was in it, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. And they burned the whole city with fire. Only the vessels of silver and gold and brass and iron they put into the treasury of the Lord. And Joshua swore at that time, saying, Cursed be the man who builds Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates thereof. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, son of Judah, dealt treacherously in the accursed thing. And he took of the accursed thing and hid it in the tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And it was after this, when the children of Israel had returned from burning Jericho, Joshua sent men to spy out also Ai and to fight against it. And the men went up and spied out Ai, and they returned and said, Let not all the people go up with thee to Ai. Only let about three thousand men go up and smite the city, for the men thereof are but few. And Joshua did so. And there went up with them of the children of Israel about three thousand men. And they fought against the men of Ai. And the battle was severe against Israel. And the men of Ai smote thirty-six men of Israel. And the children of Israel fled from before the men of Ai. And when Joshua saw this thing, he tore his garments and fell upon his face to the ground before the Lord, he with the elders of Israel. And they put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Why, O Lord, didst thou bring this people over the Jordan? What shall I say after the Israelites have turned their backs against their enemies? Now therefore all the Canaanites, inhabitants of the land, will hear this thing, and surround us and cut off our name. And the Lord said to Joshua, Why dost thou fall upon thy face? Rise, get thee off, for the Israelites have sinned and taken of the accursed thing. I will no more be with them unless they destroy the accursed thing from amongst them. And Joshua rose up and assembled the people, and brought the Urim by the order of the Lord. And the tribe of Judah was taken, and Achan the son of Carmi was taken. And Joshua said to Achan, Tell me, my son, what hast thou done? And Achan said, I saw amongst the spoil a goodly garment of Shina, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight. I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are all hid in the earth in the midst of the tent. And Joshua sent men who went and took them from the tent of Achan, and they brought them to Joshua. And Joshua took Achan and these utensils, and his sons and daughters and all belonging to him, and they brought them into the valley of Achor. And Joshua burned them there with fire. And all the Israelites stoned Achan with stones. And they raised over him a heap of stones. Therefore did he call that place the Valley of Achor. So the Lord's anger was appeased. And Joshua afterward came to the city and fought against it. And the Lord said to Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. 
Behold, I have given into thy hand Ai, her king and her people, and thou shalt do unto them as thou didst to Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey for yourselves. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua did according to the word of the Lord, and he chose from amongst the sons of war thirty thousand valiant men, and he sent them, and they lay in ambush for the city. And he commanded them, saying, When you shall see us, we will flee before them with cunning, and they will pursue us. You shall then rise out of the ambush and take the city. And they did so. And Joshua fought, and the men of the city went out toward Israel, not knowing that they were lying in ambush for them behind the city. And Joshua and all the Israelites feigned themselves wearied out before them, and they fled by the way of the wilderness with cunning. And the men of Ai gathered all the people who were in the city to pursue the Israelites, and they went out and were drawn away from the city. Not one remained, and they left the city open and pursued the Israelites. And those who were lying in ambush rose up out of their places and hastened to come to the city and took it and set it on fire. And the men of Ai turned back, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to the skies, and they had no means of retreating either one way or the other. And all the men of Ai were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them so that not one of them remained. And the children of Israel took Milosh, king of Ai, alive, and they brought him to Joshua, and Joshua hanged him on a tree, and he died. And the children of Israel returned to the city after having burned it, and they smote all those that were in it with the edge of the sword. And the number of those that had fallen of the men of Ai, both man and woman, was twelve thousand. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city they took to themselves, according to the word of the Lord to Joshua. And all the kings on this side Jordan, all the kings of Canaan, heard of the evil which the children of Israel had done to Jericho and to Ai. And they gathered themselves together to fight against Israel. Only the inhabitants of Gibeon were greatly afraid of fighting against the Israelites, lest they should perish. So they acted cunningly, and they came to Joshua and to all Israel, and said unto them, We have come from a distant land, now therefore make a covenant with us. And the inhabitants of Gibeon overreached the children of Israel, and the children of Israel made a covenant with them, and they made peace with them. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them. But afterward the children of Israel knew that they were neighbors to them, and were dwelling amongst them. But the children of Israel slew them not, for they had sworn to them by the Lord, and they became hewers of wood and drawers of water. And Joshua said to them, Why did you deceive me to do this thing to us? And they answered him, saying, Because it was told to thy servants all that you done to all the kings of the Amorites, and we were greatly afraid of our lives, and we did this thing. And Joshua appointed them on that day to hew wood and to draw water. And he divided them for slaves to all the tribes of Israel. And when Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, heard all that the children of Israel had done to Jericho and to Ai, he sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, and to Piram, king at Jarmuth, and to Japhia, king of Lachish, and to Deba, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me, and help me that we may smite the children of Israel and the inhabitants of Gibeon, who have made peace with the children of Israel. And they gathered themselves together, and the five kings of the Amorites went up with all their camps, a mighty people, numerous as the sand of the seashore. And all these kings came and encamped before Gibeon, and began to fight against the inhabitants of Gibeon. And all the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua, saying, Come up quickly to us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites have gathered together to fight against us. And Joshua and all the fighting people went up from Gilgal. And Joshua came suddenly to them and smote these five kings with a great slaughter. And the Lord confounded them before the children of Israel, who smote them with a terrible slaughter in Gibeon, and pursued them along the way that goes up to Beth-horon unto Machedah. 
and they fled from before the children of Israel. And whilst they were fleeing, the Lord sent upon them hailstones from heaven, and more of them died by the hailstones than by the slaughter of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel pursued them, and they still smote them in the road, going on and smiting them. And when they were smiting, the day was declining toward evening. And Joshua said in the sight of all the people, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon, until the nation shall have revenged itself upon its enemies. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Joshua, and the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens, and it stood still sixty and thirty moments. And the moon also stood still, and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that, before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Jasher chapter 89 Then spoke Joshua this song, on the day that the Lord had given the Amorites into the hand of Joshua and the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of all Israel, Thou hast done mighty things, O Lord. Thou hast performed great deeds. Who is like unto thee? My lips shall sing to thy name. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower. I will sing a new song unto thee. With thanksgiving will I sing to thee. Thou art the strength of my salvation. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. The princes of the world shall sing to thee. The children of Israel shall rejoice in thy salvation. They shall sing and praise thy power. To thee, O Lord, did we confide. We said, Thou art our God, for thou wast our shelter and strong tower against our enemies. To thee we cried and were not ashamed. In thee we trusted and were delivered. When we cried unto thee, thou didst hear our voice. Thou didst deliver our souls from the sword. Thou didst show unto us thy grace. Thou didst give unto us thy salvation. Thou didst rejoice our hearts with thy strength. Thou didst go forth for our salvation. With thine arm thou didst redeem thy people. Thou didst answer us from the heavens of thy holiness. Thou didst save us from ten thousands of people. The sun and moon stood still in heaven. And thou didst stand in thy wrath against our oppressors, and didst command thy judgments over them. All the princes of the earth stood up. The kings of the nations had gathered themselves together. They were not moved at thy presence. They desired thy battles. Thou didst rise against them in thine anger, and didst bring down thy wrath upon them. Thou didst destroy them in thine anger, and cut them off in thine heart. Nations have been consumed with thy fury. Kingdoms have declined because of thy wrath. Thou didst wound kings in the day of thine anger. Thou didst pour thy fury upon them. Thy wrathful anger took hold of them. Thou didst turn their iniquity upon them, and didst cut them off in their wickedness. They did spread a trap. They fell therein. In the net they hid, their foot was caught. Thine hand was ready for all thine enemies who said, Through their sword they possess the land, through their arm they dwelt in the city. Thou didst fill their faces with shame, thou didst bring their horns down to the ground, thou didst terrify them in thy wrath, and didst destroy them in thine anger. The earth trembled and shook at the sound of thy storm over them. Thou didst not withhold their souls from death, and didst bring down their lives to the grave. Thou didst pursue them in thy storm, thou didst consume them in thy whirlwind, thou didst turn their rain into hail. They fell in deep pits, so that they could not rise. Their carcasses were like rubbish cast out in the middle of the streets. They were consumed and destroyed in thine anger. Thou didst save thy people with thy might. Therefore our hearts rejoice in thee, our souls exult in thy salvation, 
Our tongues shall relate thy might. We will sing and praise thy wondrous works. For thou didst save us from our enemies. Thou didst deliver us from those who rose up against us. Thou didst destroy them from before us and depress them beneath our feet. Thus shall all thine enemies perish, O Lord, and the wicked shall be like chaff driven by the wind, and thy beloved shall be like trees planted by the waters. So Joshua and all Israel with him returned to the camp in Gilgal after having smitten all the kings so that not a remnant was left of them. And the five kings fled alone on foot from battle and hid themselves in a cave. And Joshua sought for them in the field of battle and did not find them. And it was afterward told to Joshua, saying, The kings are found, and behold, they are hidden in a cave. And Joshua said, Appoint men to be at the mouth of the cave to guard them, lest they take themselves away. And the children of Israel did so. And Joshua called to all Israel and said to the officers of battle, Place your feet upon the necks of these kings. And Joshua said, So shall the Lord do to all your enemies. And Joshua commanded afterward that they should slay the kings and cast them into the cave and to put great stones at the mouth of the cave. And Joshua went afterward with all the people that were with him on that day to Machida, and he smote it with the edge of the sword and he utterly destroyed the souls and all belonging to the city, and he did to the king and people thereof as he had done to Jericho. And he passed from there to Libna, and he fought against it, and the Lord delivered it into his hand. And Joshua smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls thereof, and he did to it and to the king thereof as he had done to Jericho. And from there he passed on to Lachish to fight against it. And Horam, king of Gezer, went up to assist the men of Lachish. And Joshua smote him and his people until there was none left to him. And Joshua took Lachish and all the people thereof, and he did to it as he'd done to Libna. And Joshua passed from there to Eglon, and he took that also. And he smote it and all the people thereof with the edge of the sword. And from there he passed to Hebron and fought against it and took it and utterly destroyed it. And he returned from there with all Israel to Debir, and fought against it and smote it with the edge of the sword. And he destroyed every soul in it, he left none remaining. And he did to it and to the king thereof, as he done to Jericho. And Joshua smote all the kings of the Amorites from Kadesh Barnea to Azar. And he took their country at once, for the Lord had fought for Israel. And Joshua, with all Israel, came to the camp to Gilgal. When at that time Jabin, king of Kazor, heard all that Joshua had done to the kings of the Amorites, Jabin sent to Jobat, king of Midian, and to Laban, king of Shimron, to Jephal, king of Akshaph, and to all the kings of the Amorites, saying, Come quickly to us and help us, that we may smite the children of Israel before they come upon us and do unto us as they've done to the other kings of the Amorites. And all these kings hearkened to the words of Jabin, king of Kazor, and they went forth with all their camps, seventeen kings, and their people were as numerous as the sand on the seashore, together with horses and chariots innumerable. And they came and pitched together at the waters of Miron, and they were met together to fight against Israel. And the Lord said to Joshua, Fear them not, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver them up all slain before you. Thou shalt hoo their horses and burn their chariots with fire. And Joshua, with all the men of war, came suddenly upon them and smote them, and they fell into their hands for the Lord had delivered them into the hands of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel pursued all these kings with their camps and smote them until there was none left of them. And Joshua did to them as the Lord had spoken to him. And Joshua returned at that time to Kazor and smote it with the sword and destroyed every soul in it and burned it with fire. 
and from Kazor, Joshua passed to Shimron and smote it and utterly destroyed it. From there he passed to Akshaph, and he did to it as he done to Shimron. From there he passed to Adullam, and he smote all the people in it, and he did to Adullam as he done to Akshaph and to Shimron. And he passed from them to all the cities of the kings which he had smitten, and he smote all the people that were left of them, and he utterly destroyed them. Only their booty and cattle the Israelites took to themselves as a prey. But every human being they smote. They suffered not a soul to live. As the Lord had commanded Moses, so did Joshua and all Israel. They failed not in anything. So Joshua and all the children of Israel smote the whole land of Canaan as the Lord had commanded them, and smote all their kings, being thirty and one kings. And the children of Israel took their whole country. Besides the kingdoms of Sihon and Og, which are on the other side Jordan, of which Moses had smitten many cities, and Moses gave them to the Reubenites and the Gadites and to half the tribe of Manasseh. And Joshua smote all the kings that were on this side Jordan to the west, and gave them for an inheritance to the nine tribes and to the half-tribe of Israel. For five years did Joshua carry on the war with these kings, and he gave their cities to the Israelites. And the land became tranquil from battle throughout the cities of the Amorites and the Canaanites. Jasher chapter 90 At that time, in the fifth year after the children of Israel had passed over Jordan, after the children of Israel had rested from their war with the Canaanites, at that time great and severe battles arose between Edom and the children of Chittim, and the children of Chittim fought against Edom. And Abianus, king of Chittim, went forth in that year, that is the thirty-first year of his reign and a great force with him of the mighty men of the children of Chittim. And he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. And Hadad, the king of Edom, heard of his report. And he went forth to meet him with a heavy people and strong force, and engaged in battle with him in the field of Edom. And the hand of Chittim prevailed over the children of Esau. And the children of Chittim slew of the children of Esau two and twenty thousand men and all the children of Esau fled from before them. And the children of Chittim pursued them, and they reached Hadad, king of Edom, who was running before them, and they caught him alive, and brought him to Abianus, king of Chittim. And Abianus ordered him to be slain. And Hadad, king of Edom, died in the forty-eighth year of his reign. And the children of Chittim continued their pursuit of Edom, and they smote them with a great slaughter and Edom became subject to the children of Chittim. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom, and Edom became under the hand of the children of Chittim, and became one kingdom from that day. And from that time they could no more lift up their heads, and their kingdom became one with the children of Chittim. And Abianus placed officers in Edom, and all the children of Edom became subject and tributary to Abianus. And Abianus turned back to his own land, Chittim. And when he returned, he renewed his government and built for himself a spacious and fortified palace for a royal residence and reigned securely over the children of Chittim and over Edom. In those days, after the children of Israel had driven away all the Canaanites and the Amorites, Joshua was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to Joshua, Thou art old, advanced in life, and a great part of the land remains to be possessed. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes and to the half-tribe of Manasseh. And Joshua rose up and did as the Lord had spoken to him. And he divided the whole land to the tribes of Israel as an inheritance according to their divisions. But to the tribe at Levi he gave no inheritance. The offerings of the Lord are their inheritance, as the Lord had spoken of them by the hand of Moses. And Joshua 
gave Mount Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, one portion above his brethren, as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Therefore Hebron became an inheritance to Caleb and his children unto this day. And Joshua divided the whole land by lots to all Israel for an inheritance, as the Lord had commanded him. And the children of Israel gave cities to the Levites from their own inheritance, and suburbs for their cattle and property, as the Lord had commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And they divided the land by lot, whether great or small. And they went to inherit the land according to their boundaries. And the children of Israel gave to Joshua the son of Nun an inheritance amongst them. By the word of the Lord did they give to him the city which he required, Timnath-Sirach, in Mount Ephraim. And he built the city and dwelt therein. These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribes portioned out to the children of Israel by lot in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle. And they left off dividing the land. And the Lord gave the land to the Israelites, and they possessed it as the Lord had spoken to them, and as the Lord had sworn to their ancestors. And the Lord gave to the Israelites rest from all their enemies around them, and no man stood up against them. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands, and not one thing failed of all the good which the Lord had spoken to the children of Israel. Yea, the Lord performed everything. And Joshua called to all the children of Israel, and he blessed them and commanded them to serve the Lord. And he afterward sent them away, and they went each man to his city, and each man to his inheritance. And the children of Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And the Lord gave them rest from all around them, and they dwelt securely in their cities. And it came to pass in those days that Abianus king of Chittim died in the thirty-eighth year of his reign, that is, the seventh year of his reign over Edom, and they buried him in his place which he had built for himself. And Latinus reigned in his stead fifty years. And during his reign he brought forth an army, and he went and fought against the inhabitants of Britannia and Canania, the children of Elisha son of Javan. And he prevailed over them and made them tributary. He then heard that Edom had revolted from under the hand of Chittim. And Latinus went to them and smote them and subdued them, and placed them under the hand of the children of Chittim. And Edom became one kingdom with the children of Chittim all the days. And for many years there was no king in Edom, and their government was with the children of Chittim and their king. And it was in the twenty-sixth year after the children of Israel had passed the Jordan, that is, the sixty-sixth year after the children of Israel had departed from Egypt, that Joshua was old, advanced in years, being one hundred and eight years old in those days. And Joshua called to all Israel, to their elders, their judges and officers, after the Lord had given to all the Israelites rest from all their enemies round about. And Joshua said to the elders of Israel and to their judges, Behold, I am old, advanced in years, and you have seen what the Lord has done to all the nations whom he has driven away from before you. For it is the Lord who has fought for you. Now therefore strengthen yourselves to keep and do all the words of the law of Moses, not to deviate from it to the right or to the left not to come amongst those nations which are left in the land. Neither shall you make mention of the name of their gods. But you shall cleave to the Lord your God, as you have done to this day. And Joshua greatly exhorted the children of Israel to serve the Lord all their days. And all the Israelites said, We will serve the Lord our God all our days, we and our children and our children's children and our seed for ever. And Joshua made a covenant with the people on that day. And he sent away the children of Israel, and they went each man to his inheritance and to his city. And it was in those days 
when the children of Israel were dwelling securely in their cities, that they buried the coffins of the tribes of their ancestors, which they had brought up from Egypt, each man in the inheritance of his children. The twelve sons of Jacob did the children of Israel bury, each man in the possession of his children. And these are the names of the cities wherein they buried the twelve sons of Jacob, whom the children of Israel had brought up from Egypt. And they buried Reuben and Gad on this side Jordan in Ramia, which Moses had given to their children. And Simeon and Levi they buried in the city of Mauda, which he had given to the children of Simeon. And the suburb of the city was for the children of Levi. And Judah they buried in the city of Benjamin, opposite Bethlehem. And the bones of Issachar and Zebulun they buried in Zidon, in the portion which fell to their children. And Dan was buried of his children in Eshtael, and Naphtali and Asher they buried in Kadesh Naphtali, each man in his place which he had given to his children. And the bones of Joseph they buried in Shechem, in the part of the field which Jacob had purchased from Hamor, and which became to Joseph for an inheritance. And they buried Benjamin in Jerusalem, opposite the Jebusite, which was given to the children of Benjamin. The children of Israel buried their fathers, each man in the city of his children. And at the end of two years, Joshua the son of Nun died, one hundred and ten years old. And the time which Joshua judged Israel was twenty-eight years. And Israel served the Lord all the days of his life. And the other affairs of Joshua and his battles and his reproofs with which he reproved Israel and all which he had commanded them, and the names of the cities which the children of Israel possessed in his days, behold, they are written in the book of the words of Joshua to the children of Israel, and in the book of the wars of the Lord, which Moses and Joshua and the children of Israel had written. And the children of Israel buried Joshua in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Sirach, which was given to him in Mount Ephraim. And Eleazar the son of Aaron died in those days. And they buried him in a hill belonging to Phinehas his son, which was given him in Mount Ephraim. Jasher chapter 91 at that time, after the death of Joshua, the children of the Canaanites were still in the land, and the Israelites resolved to drive them out. And the children of Israel asked of the Lord, saying, Who shall first go up for us to the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. And the children of Judah said to Simeon, Go up with us into our lot, and we will fight against the Canaanites and we likewise will go up with you in your lot. So the children of Simeon went with the children of Judah. And the children of Judah went up and fought against the Canaanites. So the Lord delivered the Canaanites into the hands of the children of Judah, and they smote them in Bezek ten thousand men. And they fought with Adonai Bezek in Bezek, and he fled from before them, and they pursued him and caught him, and they took hold of him and cut off his thumbs and great toes. And Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. As I have done, so God has requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. And the children of Simeon went with the children of Judah, and they smote the Canaanites with the edge of the sword. And the Lord was with the children of Judah, and they possessed the mountain, and the children of Joseph went up to Bethel, the same as Luz, and the Lord was with them. And the children of Joseph spied out Bethel, and the watchmen saw a man going forth from the city, and they caught him and said unto him, Show us now the entrance of the city, and we will show kindness to thee. And that man showed them the entrance of the city. And the children of Joseph came and smote the city with the edge of the sword. And the man with his family they sent away. And he went to the Hittites, and he built a city, and he called the name thereof Luz. So all the Israelites dwelt in their cities, and the children of Israel dwelt 
in their cities. And the children of Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who had lengthened their days after Joshua and saw the great work of the Lord which he had performed for Israel. And the elders judged Israel after the death of Joshua for seventeen years. And all the elders also fought the battles of Israel against the Canaanites. And the Lord drove the Canaanites from before the children of Israel in order to place the Israelites in their land. And he accomplished all the words which he'd spoken to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the oath which he had sworn to give to them and to their children the land of the Canaanites. And the Lord gave to the children of Israel the whole land of Canaan, as he had sworn to their ancestors. And the Lord gave them rest from those around them, and the children of Israel dwelt securely in their cities. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen and Amen. Strengthen yourselves, and let the hearts of all you that trust in the Lord be of good courage. The End